And I remember my mom was like, have you told him that you don't want to live there? And she's like, what am I saying? I know you have. She's like, so Stephanie, have you prayed about it? And I was like, yes. She's like, okay, well, tell me how you're praying about it. And I was like, help this fool to realize that we don't, we need to be here and stuff. Exact, exact, no lie. That's how I was praying to God. And my mom was like, please stop doing that. That's not how you pray to God. And she was like, Stephanie, I need you to have faith in God and put your faith in God and not put your faith in your tongue. And so she was like, stop telling Brian, stop beating him over the head with you don't want to live here because he's not going to hear you. He's going to keep he's going to yeah. shut you down and you're going to be living in Oklahoma City. <laughs> and so you'll be the mayor of Oklahoma City. Yeah, like, yeah. Girl, yeah. like you're you going to be living here. So stop saying it. She was like, I, instead, I want you to pray for the future husband he's going to be. Mm. Pray for the future father who's going to be. Pray for the future leader who's going to be. I Teach just need you to stop saying that to him. And now I just need you to take that to God. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> We share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman to God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people, it means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lataris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lataris R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Now, when I say, when, when, you know, at the beginning when I talked about shacking <laughs> these guests today, well, we're going to unpack that as uh, we tell this story because this pastor has been revolutionary in helping to thwart the... Uh, the lifestyles of people who decide to shack. So uh, it's going to be quite interesting. So listen, without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homies, Brian and Stephanie Carter. How y'all doing? We're doing good. Doing great, Thanks for having me. Can I call you Brian or should I call you Pastor Carter? Whatever you want to do. No, Pastor Carter. Pastor Carter. <laughs> call you Pastor Carter. <laughs> she said, not Pastor Carter. <laughs> you know what? I always ask guests, um, especially when they're, they're uh, married, I ask them if there was a title, if someone wrote a movie about your life, about your relationship, about your love journey, what will be the title of that movie? And um, so I'm going to ask y'all, what would be the name of that? What you think? <laughs> uh, made the Last. Made the Last. Made, made the last. last. Made the Last. So, uh, Pastor Carter, I still got to call you Pastor. I'm That's sorry. fine. That's fine. So I can't just call you Brian. I just feel like I'm going to go to hell if I do that. Uh, so, uh, Pastor Carter, um, what made you write this book? Man, we wrote the book because we really wanted to help relationships, right? Um, we've been married almost 25 years this year. We've had, we've had some wins, had some losses. We made our share of mistakes. And we just learned a lot, right? And yeah. so we wanted to kind of put a book together that kind of captures that journey, that story, uh, and to be able to help couples, right? So many people are trying to figure out relationships. Yeah. Singles and marriage, trying to figure out how do I do it? What does it take? And so we tried to boil down about eight key ways, right, that you can kind of build foundations for a long-lasting relationship, right? It takes two people to make it happen, but we wanted to give you some foundational truths. Well, listen, uh, before we even go into this book, I want people to be introduced to who y'all are because y'all are the pastor. One thing I love about the, the mission of Concord is that it's we grow people. Yes, sir. Where did that come from? It came from really the heartbeat of us saying that when you talk about your relationship with God, what God wants to do is help you to grow, right? right. And it's not just you, 
it's everybody, right? That we all ought to be growing together. And so our whole focus is really creating a movement of people that are not only growing in their own walk with the Lord, but helping others to grow with them. And when you grow with God, it not, it's not just your spiritual life, financial, relationship, family, all those spaces ought to grow with you. And so we just pray that that's, that's our track. That's who Concord Dallas is. People committed to growing together and helping others to grow. You consider uh, Concord a mega church? According to the definition, they say anything <laughs> over 2,000. But in, in, in Texas, everything is mega. Yeah, everything. Walmart's mega. I yeah. mean, the, the mall, everything in Texas is mega. <laughs> How many members y'all have there now? We've got about 10,000 members. So it's uh, uh, safe to say it's a mega church. <laughs> safe to say. Safe to say. Safe to say. Well, I love how y'all operate as pastors. One thing that I love most about y'all is y'all are extremely transparent. So y'all totally fit the, the, um, the mantra of the show. The show, uh, we have this. Uh, acronym, which is LIT. We live intentionally and transparently. And so that's what always drew me to your ministry. Uh, you and I have been able to work together as far mm -hmm. as having one of my plays take place. I wrote a show for Concord for Christmas a few years ago. Yes, sir. Uh, so again, thank y'all for having me. Thank you. Um, I got y'all's kids approval because <laughs> Stephanie said, Stephanie said, listen, the kids was like, you know, they was paying attention. They said, we like this. So, so I always say we can uh, appeal to kids because the Bible says come to me as a child so if you can give a message that makes kids interested then i feel like we we've done our job definitely yeah. definitely how did y'all meet stephanie so we met at a kappa party <laughs> yeah so we met at a kappa party who's the kappa um, the guy I was talking to before I talked, started talking to him. Okay. So we were at this conference. I went to university of Oklahoma. He went to Oklahoma state. And so back then they had a conference called big eight cause it was big eight. Now it's big 12. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so it was on black student government. And so that's when everybody came together and I had some friends who kept saying, Oh, you gotta meet this guy. You gotta meet this guy. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'm focusing on my studies. And they're like, no, 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 you got to meet him. So um, at this Kappa party, uh, they basically use me to go dance with his fraternity brothers. So they leave me kind of standing there. And I'm under the I'm under the impression that he wants to meet me because I'm like, of course you want to meet me. But then he kind of just like looked down at me <laughs> and was like, oh, okay. Hey. And I was like, oh, oh no. I left a perfectly good Kappa <laughs> to come over here and Krista and Nikki have used me to get to your frat brothers. So then his frat brother asked me to dance and I was like, no. And I just walked away. That's how y'all met. That's, how, That's we how, met. how we met. So what, were you not interested <laughs> in what was going on? Did, did they lie and say, who was trying to connect y'all? How did that, how did so that happen? So we had mutual friends, right? They were really cool with her and me. And so, but we didn't, we didn't quite know. So the yeah. next step was, they said, hey, did you like her, right? And they said, hey, you can call her. So they gave me her number. This how would you makes... how would you even like her? You didn't get a chance to talk well, to I her. I saw, I checked her out, right? <laughs> so she 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 looked fine, right? So <laughs> I said, listen, I, I want to talk to her. So they gave me the number and I called her up like maybe the next couple of days. And when I called her, we talked on the phone for like three hours. So what happened in the first connection? Why did you act uninterested? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know exactly. I was being That's I didn't a know. Good question. <laughs> it's I didn't know. Years I didn't late. know. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know I was being set up, right? I just thought, hey, hi, you meet each other and keep kind of going. But, okay. So, you know. You thought I was on some platonic type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I was just like, okay, okay. He was a player back there was then. Y'all's pastor the, was a player. It was a last He was, he, he was an alpha? Yeah, he an alpha. He leaving out the part that he was dating one of them. He, like, dated, like, two of my friends. Two of your friends? Mm -hmm. They were even in the wedding, man. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but but I told her I was just trying to get to her. I yeah, was trying, trying to move yeah, everybody yeah, out of yeah, the way because yeah. you were the one that I really, really yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. It, it was biblical. It said, so no man come to the Father except by me. So no, <laughs> so no I'm trying to, to make my way. I said, I, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Just hold on. I'm yeah. coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And so y'all, during that three-hour conversation, what was what did y'all find that was connecting y'all? Cause y'all are in y'all are in college, so we're out. We're at two different colleges, an hour and a half apart. So, mm -hmm. but it was just what you, it was just something there, man. She was fun. She had goals. Uh, she was really really cool, man. I mean, so, so what you I think? What you think? Cause you you was a player during that time. Did you say, mm -hmm. oh, that's just gonna be another one that you know I run through, or it's gonna be somebody that <laughs> I feel like, like I can spend forever? Oh, I like <laughs> you. oh yeah, we keep it real over here. <laughs> <laughs> See, I won't tell all your business because oh, oh, oh. the night before our first date, yeah, I, we oh, real transparent. Yeah. 
I would just say, <laughs> just like say college what? was a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of women you're trying to find. I felt like I wanted to to be committed, right? Okay. But I just I just couldn't I couldn't I felt like I was just waiting on the right one. So I was had a lot of different relationships, uh, sleeping around, and then finally. When I found her, man, I just knew, man, this is this is it, man. It was something about her. It was something about her. She I always told her she had the total package, right? She was yeah. fine. She was smart. She had goals. She had ambitions. She loved the Lord, right? That's in there too. And so, I mean, I felt like she just had. <laughs> so that's in there too. <laughs> she, had, yeah. she had all. She had it all, man. She had everything I was looking for. What's that? What's the documentary that's coming out? Uh, oh, Freak Nick. Freak Nick. We ain't gonna see you now. <laughs> 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 We I was trying that. to get there. We were I was online. We didn't have money. We didn't have money to, to go to Freak Nick. So you have y'all, to see y'all us. Have money to go there? I wish yeah, I was we in there. I didn't make it. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> make it. I think that's your prime color right now. All we had back then was the Kappa Beach party. Yeah, you could we had drive. Beach party. Yeah. You could drive to the Kappa Beach yeah, party. Down, the, uh, down in um, Galveston. Galveston, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's all we had. And so when you, when, you, when you met her, was this this thing that, because you talk about They always say, uh, when you know, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all were still young, so I can't say that you actually knew that this was your wife. But what did you think? What was it? You said she's smart, she's intelligent, she Mm -hmm. she loves the Lord. You know, but what was it that you think? Were you just saying, I'll just be day by day, ain't trying to be locked down uh, at this stage in my life. What did you think of her? Man, I got to be honest. Like, I was looking for a commitment. You were. I got to be honest. I just, mm-hmm. I needed, so I'm a preacher, right? Yeah. So I'm preaching, I'm a preacher on college. And so the Are preaching, you preaching in college? Yeah, so preaching <laughs> and, like, sleeping around, like, that don't really go well together. Like, that wasn't working for me. Like, I was trying, I, in college, you know, you trying to live yeah, the you right life. Yourself. But it's just like, this is hard. This is this <laughs> pressure. It's, it's here. And All so this temptation I, running around. I got to a point where, man, I really needed, like, I really wanted somebody. Like I really did. I don't know if it's because watching my dad. That's what I was about to ask His you. commitment to my 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 mom. They were married over forty seven years. Or my, years. Or my brothers who got married early in their lives. Something in me said, I need somebody. Like I can't be in these streets. Yeah. This is not going to end well. Mm-hmm. I need somebody. <laughs> this ain't gonna end well. <laughs> this ain't gonna well. This ain't gonna end well. This is not going to end and well. You're like what? Twenty to twenty one? I'm like twenty one or something. But I 20, just 21? I just know I needed yeah. somebody. I knew I needed somebody. I knew I needed somebody. I just couldn't. I wasn't going to make it out there. It's just too much. <laughs> anyway, look, back then, like, we're 49. Yeah, we're four, I'm 49. That's he's 48. Much. And it, the crazy thing back then was even when, like, there was a season where I was really trying to be fast. Because my friends were fast. You're trying to be. I was trying to be fast. <laughs> and this one night, I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, it, it's on tonight. <laughs> The Lord, I'm not lying. It rains like nothing in Oklahoma. <laughs> and my car flooded. Cause I was like, your car flooded. Yes, I was trying to get home, and I just remember as I was sitting there watching my car flood. I said, "Yeah, change has got to come. This is this is ridiculous." And this, this and the boy who's watching is like, "Dang, I could, yeah, you could have, but the flood came." So you were driving, you were driving through the water. I was driving through the water because I was. She was headed to. That she was spot. headed there, she and it just caught you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And okay, so what's that? Okay, that that was the summer of my freshman year. Yeah. yeah. No, the summer of my sophomore year. So going into my sophomore year, I kind of was like, I really need to focus. And I'm tired of chasing, you know, this person who I think or whatever. Yeah. And then um, I was just like really to myself. And I had really great guy friends. I would tell anybody who's single to, get, I even, get, yeah. to have some really good guy we friends. We talked about that on the show. We played cards with these guys. Right. These these were our friends. Like we go to the party. If we were at the party and like we didn't like somebody who was trying to talk to us. We'd be like, okay, we just going to pretend yeah. or just whatever. But it was just such a, such a safe place. So then when I met him, like Krista and Nikki had been talking about him for a minute. Like Nikki basically was using him because <laughs> she had another boyfriend that went to another school. So she's like, he'll wine and dine you. I mean, I was, I just, I was a romantic man. Yeah, yeah. He was not, very romantic. I know how to take care of you. I had a slow jam him. music. He was slow I jam take tape. you to dinner. I got you. Take you go, you're, going, you're going there, record the, the, record the music on the tape, put listen, your favorite love songs. Listen, and be like, baby, I listen, made this for you. This is you, man. I got you. Know I got you. Well. That's him. Because I'm really the same way. That's why. Uh-huh. He talk on the slow jam tape. So when they told me like, oh, you know, he's interested, you know, do you want him to call you? And I was like, wait, tell me something about him. They're like, you know, he's, they're like, he's an alpha. I was like, mm, 
And I'm like, oh, and, you know, he's the president at Oklahoma State. I was like, mm. He was the president of your college? No, like I was like, just like very citizen. involved. Oh. Black yeah. student association, stuff like that. Just very involved. So you was always a leader. very humble, but he... He ran the campus like he can walk on his PWI. Like he's the only black person I know who can walk on this campus. And they'd be like, Brian, oh my God, good to see you. Good to see you. Oh my gosh, Brian. Like he got an alumni award. Like he's being very humble. He's very humble. But what school was that? Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma you already State. know there's yeah. no black people there. So nah. for the fact that they're like yeah. all mm-hmm. on them. Yeah. So but uh <laughs> so anyway, they're telling me all this, and then they go, Oh, and he's a preacher. I was like, Absolutely not. Yeah, that was a, that wasn't go. That oh, wasn't working no. for me. <laughs> oh no! That wasn't good for you. That, that, that PR to be like I'm a preacher. Like, don't, don't put that what, what girl in college is looking for a preacher? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> not who you want. When you said your fraternity, they be like, hey. And you said preacher, like, oh, uh, <laughs> that yeah. don't match up. No, it ain't match up. No. And so you, so were you marriage minded at that young age? No, not really. I think I kind of given up. Just, at that young age? Yeah, because guys were just kind of like, yeah. Oh, how'd you give up at 20? You just did. They were just kind of, <laughs> guys were guys back then. And, okay, so one thing that saved me from a life of hodum <laughs> was I had an older brother. I had an older brother, and he was a straight dog. He was an athlete. He went to PV, and he basically broke it down to me what was going to happen as soon as I hit campus. And everything he said happened really and so like at first i was kind of like i was listening to him kind of and i was like you don't know what you're talking about but i remember he was like stephanie now when you get on campus you know you because uh, anyway he was like when you get on campus you're gonna be the hottest thing and i was like mm, no i'm not he was like you weren't the hottest thing in high school but you're gonna be the hottest thing you a virgin you this you yeah. got a car you got a little i like a little rabbit convertible he's like you cute so they're gonna be on you he was like but do not date anybody in a fraternity. Do not date an athlete. Do not. He was like, just don't date anybody. Don't mess with nobody. Said, don't date nobody. Don't date athletes. Don't date fraternity. Yeah. Sister, don't date nobody. Yeah, and then he said, if you do, if you choose to date anybody, he was like, especially an athlete, especially somebody in a fraternity, that's the only one you can date. He was like, because then you'll be labeled. You'll be in, you'll be a, what is he? It's like, you'll be a capo ho. You'll be an athlete ho. I mean, he just was like, and I kept feeling like, what is he? Like, he needs, he needs cussing, so I can't cuss right now. So, so, is this your big brother? This is my big brother. He's my older brother. I'm telling you, he saved me from a life of hodum. I'm telling you. So, I'm I mean, telling you, good. I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta uh, speak and pour into your, your sisters. and Because at the end of the day, he was giving you the game. Right. He yeah. gave me the game, and I watched him play the game on girls. Yeah. So, I kept feeling like, oh, you just told that girl you loved her over the phone. Because, you know, this is for cell phones. <laughs> you just told her you so, loved her. oh, my gosh. And then you talk. Oh, and, you know, he dated the world. So, but <laughs> but the crazy thing was, um, I remember I was talking to this dude my freshman year. He's cap. And I remember my brother's like, you talking to somebody? I was like, yeah. He was like, mm, okay, watch. So then he's like, when he figures out he's not going to get anything from you, he's going to dump you. Now, are you, you know, are you dumb yeah. him or whatever? So, like, I broke up with him. It was just weird. It was just like an awkward feeling. Like, I was like, oh, this is not at all what I thought relationships were going to be. So then, um, like, I think I broke up with him, like, on a Friday night. His fraternity brother was calling me, hmm. like, Sunday. Like, Trying hey. to holler? Yeah, and I kept feeling like, what? <laughs> and then, like, everything that my brother said came back and I was like, oh yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done His attorney around. brother uh, circled around and tried to holler. Yeah, he's like, you want to go study? Because, you know, we didn't have laptops back yeah. then. You want to go to the library? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> so, so when you looked at, so when you met him, you were automatically like, no, you know, because the preacher thing, what made that change? That three hour conversation? Really that three hour conversation. It kind of goes back to he just, he was like the first guy I talked to who had actual goals. Mm. He like cared about what I was interested in. That's good. And I mean, if he said he was going to do something, he did it. That's good. So if he said like, okay, I'll call you at three. He called me at three. That's good. So, you know, you already as a, you know, like I wouldn't say a woman, but as a, yeah, as a woman, as a woman. you already have like kind of um, like a wall built up. And through that, each conversation, each action he did, a brick would go yep. down. And so I remember it might have been like maybe our, no, it was our first date. I'm telling you, he was super romantic, y'all. He was the sweetest. Like the fact that he took me to Olive Garden, I kept feeling like, hmm, 
And then like, this is so bad. I had money in my purse cause just in case. I was like, just in case you want to go Dutch, <laughs> you know, Negroes today. And so that's how bad it was. But actually worse now. They actually right. worse. Yeah, it's worse. worse now. Now they saying, shoot, a woman, y'all need to go 50-50. If I, we go out to eat, matter of fact, they be like, we just can meet up and go get a coffee or something. We're going to make this date as cheap as, as, cheap as possible. Because it's an interview. I don't know oh. if I like you, so I'm not investing a $25 plate in your life. Not it's even like, Olive Garden. Nope, That's cold nope, blooded. Nope. nope. You're going to pay for yourself? No. <laughs> we, we can do better. <laughs> we got to do better. Yeah. We got to do better. If you got 21 year old uh, Brian over here understanding what chivalry looks like. Mm. So this is crazy. And so you said that you took money as a backup plan. At that young age, you experienced that much stuff to where you started thinking like that? Yeah. And then plus, not not um, I experienced it, but my friends had experienced mm. it. So as girls, you know, we were just kind of like, well, this is, well, Lord, this is how it go. You know, hope for the best. <laughs> and um, and that's really kind of how you went into it. You had your wall and then slowly that wall came down. Like I remember at our, at our first date, he had flowers like at my seat, like yellow roses and so on. Now, there's a story behind that, and I'm not going to embarrass him about the flowers. You can't just throw that out there like that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to say it. All right, so. <laughs> okay, look. <laughs> so he was talking to other people. Well, we, we weren't committed yet. We just <laughs> no, it it's is. our first date. Yeah, of course. Date. Yeah. It's our first date. Mm -hmm. So let's just say he had an interaction with somebody the night before. Oh, amen. And so she <laughs> saw him putting the flowers in his car from his dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> that plan didn't go as well as I <laughs> But needless to say, <laughs> he said he saw it worked you. out. I'm it telling you, it is a blessing we did not have social media. Oh, yeah. It still worked out. Because she would have been like, oh, you talking to that girl? Oh, you let me look you. Yeah, it just, that's probably why relationships don't work now. No, it's supposed me to be destroying them. So, so she saw you. She saw you in the car. What did she say to you afterwards? Well, it, it was a situation. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to talk to me, deal with me, no more. And then told her about it. So it was a little bit of a mess of situation. I was, a little I, was, bit. I, was, I was doing too much. I was doing too much, entirely too much. And so I got caught. And so the, the getting caught helped me. It, 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 you know, so it helped push you closer it helped to your destiny. me closer to my destiny. So I need to focus on one at a time. This multiple thing just ain't, it ain't good for you. So every brother, it's not good for you. Just choose one. Choose, choose one. one. Choose, one choose, choose you today who you will serve. <laughs> choose one. So, so, with, so on the first date, what happened? Uh, yeah. So I, I drove, I drove, you know, it's an hour and a half away. I drove, picked her up, had the yellow roses. That's another thing. That's another thing. You drove an hour and a half to go in on the a date. Restaurant, in the restaurant. I was trying to find her. Like I was an going hour and to, and campus, half to go campus, on campus to campus. I was I was in my campus, and I went to Langston, and I went to I was listen I was traveling on the road. He was traveling. He was a traveling minister. He was a traveling minister. Alpha. So I found her, and so I said, "Listen, let me." I drove. I picked her up. Uh, uh, we we drove. Had my my slow jams playing. Right, set the mood. I took her to the restaurant. Opened the door, got her in there, and then when we set the table, I had the waitress. I'd given these flowers to the waitress before we got there. And I said, listen, at the at the end of our dinner, would you please bring these roses out? And so she brought out the roses. She's like, oh, oh you know, and so she's, And I'm glad you chose yellow. Yellow, yellow yeah. roses. Yeah. And so we had we had a good time, man. We talked. You know what she told me later that just shocked me that I didn't really understood? She told me she felt safe with me. Yeah, at that, that young age, at that eight, I don't really know what that even. No, meant. we don't like, even I, hear that. We don't even hear that terminology until recently. Mm -hmm. uh, what did that mean to you uh, back then when you heard that, Brian? And then I'm gonna ask you, why did you say that, Stephanie? I I don't even know if I understood. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't. I just, she just told it. She told me she said I feel safe with you, and I don't know if I even yeah registered what it meant or or, but I knew that. We just really had something. I felt a connection. Like, I felt like we were really, really good friends, right? They mm. can really build something from this. Like, there was just a connection. There wasn't, she wasn't being fake and phony. I yeah. wasn't being, like, I could be who I was, right? And she could be who she was. And I just felt like I didn't have to prove a whole bunch, right? It just felt like we we could just be ourselves, right? And mm -hmm. not have to to deal with all the, the other stuff, right? So, and I think... Because we didn't get sexually active as soon as I had in other relationships, of course. 
I think too that gave us time to like build she, she, She's a strong woman. Like she, I mean, Stephanie is 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 uh, she's strong. Like so, with her bound, like she's strong, right? So I had to respect that, right? Like I was, she wasn't gonna let me just just, yeah. just like other people. She was, she was like, no, I got some boundaries, man. So so all of that I think helped helped right me respect help cultivate her, a relationship. Help cultivate a relationship. Yeah, yeah he yeah. wasn't ready because like I remember like <laughs> I remember because he I think this is so hilarious. Like I didn't know about his little past, and um, I just remember he asked me like so. Have you dated like have you dated any fraternity brothers? Like who have you dated? And I was like, Oh, I only talked to this one dude. It was it wasn't that serious or whatever. And then he was like, Have you talked to any of my fraternity brothers? I'm like, no, uh uh-uh. <laughs> And so, you know, back then you did a background check. So you asked people like yeah. about her. Yeah. And so one of his fraternity brothers was interested to me, but I friend zoned him. I was like, dude, you my friend, like, no. That's that's it. Yeah. And the dude told him, like, yeah, it just didn't work out between us. And he had the nerve <laughs> to cop an attitude with me. And I kept feeling like Listen, I had to do my research. Yeah, you, sure. you it, know it sounded like about. you lied. We yeah, said yeah. it didn't work out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what was really I going on here? Wish it would have worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but yeah, no. So but um <laughs> Is it off limits? <clears throat> Pass a card, is it off limits if your fraternity brother or homeboy had dated her in the past? Well, um, because I think me, with me and we have double standards. Like you we just do said, have double that, standards. That, that, that he dated two of your friends in the past, and, and uh, keep that same energy, Brian. Right? What, what yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I just need to know the whole story. Like, like how did this thing end? I mean, I probably may have still been open to it. Yeah. But I just need to know a little bit more detail. No, he came hard at me. Okay. Well, yeah, because you said you hadn't talked to nobody. Yeah. You know, I did the research. He found a conflict. And I found out a conflict in the background <laughs> check. Came yeah. up some flags. So, so I had some red flags come up. I just wanted to check out was the red flag real. Would it be would it would it be any different if uh she had had sex with him? It, oh yeah, he yeah. Just yeah. Me down. Like, hey. I'd be like, hey, you know what? <laughs> this ain't gonna work. Right, this ain't gonna work. Right, we had this great connection when we ate that three hour conversation. I get my roses back. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing. I um when we had the conversation about sexual partners, I said because at that time what was I? Oh, yeah. I used to do this thing for OU where I was like, um, I would go to the white fraternities and sororities and I'd talk to them about sex. Like, hey, y'all, you know, I'd show them like the pictures. Oh, you would you, teach absent like, classes or something? Yes. I, no, I wasn't teaching abstinence. I was trying to teach you all like, please protect yourselves. Oh. Please wear a condom. You know, this, that, this, that. I mean, you was actually doing that as oh, a... Yeah. As a t- <laughs> yeah, it was like a side hustle. Yeah, so yeah, my little white little white sorority friends, they'd be like, Stephanie, oh my gosh, yeah, okay, girl. But um, so just being that kind of sex educator thing, I was yeah. like, kind of like, now listen, I haven't had any sexual partners. I can name on one hand how many people I've kissed, even from high school, middle school. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> and I think that's an important question to ask. And he was like, so not ready for that. He was like, well, <laughs> but you got to have those conversations. Got to, got to. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on where you yeah. are in your journey. You, you got to pick and choose your, yeah. your conversation with your spouse. Yeah. So some people may not be ready for where no. they, wherever they think no. they be, So, But you still got to have a conversation. You have conversations, yeah. yes. But I think couples have to they have to navigate through yeah you, you know, have to what, navigate what they, through what, what gives them security right because we were young like we were young we yeah. were like in our 20s so after that so y'all touched y'all touched on something important i was at a conference last week and we were uh, i was moderating a panel and that conversation came up about do you discuss body count do you discuss yeah. past mm-hmm. uh sexual relationships with people <clears throat> and then if you're in the room with uh, said individual that you messed around in the past, should you disclose that to your significant other and say, hey, I'm just letting you know, hey, we're finna walk in this banquet, the lady that's hosting it, I done slept with him, or the guy that's getting an award, I, I, you know, we have a past, mm-hmm. you know, so let me ask y'all that. Do you believe, because I know y'all, y'all counseled people, do you believe that that is something that should be discussed, past sexual experiences? I think it's a conversation worth having, but I think the couple has to figure out what were where they stand on that, right? Yeah. The maturity so, I mean, of the couple. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. where where yeah. where are you, right? Do you want to know everything? <laughs> Can or do you, you want to just it? know because you, sometimes you may key. not be Can you, you may not it? want to know all that, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to know. where you are, that, listen. <laughs> or if it's a case where it is somebody that's present in the room, yes. they may want to say, hey, yeah, that way I can at least be aware yeah. in that mm-hmm. space. So I think it's an important conversation to have. 
But I think couples got to decide what works best for us. Which is cool because you said based on maturity, what 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 you can handle. Yeah. Um, some people say it's your past, your past. Just yeah. leave it there. And then some mm-hmm. people be like, I need to know because I don't want to look stupid when I'm in the right. room with, you know, mm-hmm. a said individual. Um, but why was that important for you to ask him? Because I didn't have any body counts. So I need to know. <laughs> this is a gift. <laughs> So I'm protecting my gift and I just need to know, I need to know what's, I think it's just like a curiosity, not curiosity thing, but it's just, I think that's just who I was. So on the path that you were season. So in that season, that path of you, uh, that you were on, were you on the path of saying you want to wait until marriage for before having sex? I want to say that I would just say that I just wasn't about to give my gift to everybody. Makes sense. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And so how long did y'all date? So y'all, y'all met at the tender age of what, 2021? Y'all were Mm -hmm. around that age. And then how long did y'all date before? Two years before we got engaged. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. No, I thought you were about to ask something else. Oh, what? Oh. No, no, no. Keep going. Yes. Oh, no. I, I, oh, I know what you're about to say. Oh, that's even better. So I'm <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. I'm there, I'm engaged. Well, no, we're going to keep it real. Did wait, y'all make wait. it Did y'all make it to the wedding before having sex? Oh, no, man. <laughs> he said no. We've been married 25 years. If my parents are watching, <laughs> our children. You're going to get a whoop when you get home. Your mom going to whoop you. No, no, no. She already knew. When we get to the Shaq story, you're going to be you're gonna be laughing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait. So what are you about to say, Pastor? I said we tried. Y'all tried. We did. We did. I, I was... We did. I think we tried. I don't know how long it was. I yeah. can't remember the uh, specifics. Uh, Stephanie, do look at it. I, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it in a year? No. Okay. Well, that's good. We made it a year. No, it, no, it wasn't a year. That's what I said. <laughs> it wasn't a year. Yeah. It was less than a year. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's move on. Move right along. <laughs> So we were engaged two years later. We were engaged two years We're going to focus on the engagement. So, so I, I will say this. It was a struggle. Of course. Right? As I mentioned, I, I think I was trying to do better, right? So I think we both had moments where she was strong. Yeah. And both were moments where I was strong. So, but I think it was an ongoing struggle as we yeah. were trying to, we both were believers, both Christians, both trying to do right. But we had, it was a struggle for those two years. And, and I want to talk about the the struggle because a lot of times from a leadership standpoint, cr- uh, singles are demonized, those that are being sexually mm-hmm. active, as if, you know, and we're going we gonna to talk because y'all are the perfect couple to talk about this because y'all are knowledgeable in the word of God and y'all are balanced with reality. Um, and I've always wanted to have this conversation. So when you, when you look at that, you talk about it's a struggle, it's a struggle. Um, as a believer... As uh, someone trying to do right, someone that's been called to ministry, someone who connected with this woman that you feel like at that time, you felt like this was your person, right? Mm -hmm. Before you even said I do, you started feeling like this is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. And so here you are, a little too young, in my opinion, to go walk down the aisle with somebody at 2021. And y'all are going through the proper process of saying, all right, I love this person. We're spending time together. Um, But temptation is always present. One person is strong in moments the other person stronger but we have these natural desires um let's talk about these natural desires and um just the reality of it so so you got to think right and nobody really and i don't blame anybody so i never really had any foundation right on how to live all i knew was don't do it right, right. don't that's, do it till you get married right? that's, right? that's, that's all they told us that's all i had right <laughs> So I get to college and I'm reading passages like it's better to marry than burn. Marry to burn, right? And so I'm like, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> so, that's the only script so, they go to. So, so, I got, so I'm that's like, look, I got, I got to do something. I got to, I got to find a way, right? <laughs> burn. I got to get out of these streets. So I got to find somebody, right? So I find her, but but this, like you say, these natural tendencies. God yeah. has created our bodies, right? Right. For a sexual intimate relationship, right? right? He He is the one from foundation when Adam and Eve. Everything in our body, we are created. But sex is reserved for marriage, right? right. It's reserved for this covenant of marriage. Uh, and so I knew that, right? But I'm like, what do I do in between? Yep. On top of that, I'm asking myself, now, what's the line? Yep. Right? Like, how far can I go Fact. and still be okay, right? Yep. And still be safe. So mm. we're, we're wrestling with where is the line, right? And yep. we're, we're trying to navigate through this. And at times, we give in. And at times, the next day, it's like, okay, hey, 
we're not gonna do that no more. Yep. Right? We 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 go we go stay strong. Yep. Right. And then somebody gives in. And so we're going back and forth. And then um, and so it's just an ongoing. The, I think the thing that helped us though was that at least we both were on the same page. Yeah. Right. To be able that, to have that, those real that, conversations. That, right. That we were able that I wasn't one. I got to a point in my life where I wasn't just gonna hit it and quit it. Yeah. But I was at a point in my life where I was like, okay, this is serious. Help let's help each other. Yeah. Try to get through this so that we don't get and it helps we're an hour and a half apart, right? All this kind of this that helps and hurts, right? Yeah. But um <laughs> but but yeah, so we just, you said it helps and hurts to talk about how it helps. Well it helps because y'all away from each other. And right? it hurts because of what? It hurts because when y'all finally get together, <laughs> y'all went away from each other. Facts. So it's good and bad. Yeah. So so we got that tension, right? Yeah. So when somebody mm-hmm. comes, yep. they go spend the night, right? And yep. they go stay with you for the weekend. And so it, it just it was an ongoing from the, from the time we started dating to the time we ultimately get married. It's a four years, four years, four years, mm-hmm. right? Where we're still back and forth in this deal, trying to. So you got honor. married around twenty five. We did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you got to think about, and what's so interesting that uh, as I've been studying just the brain, um, our frontal lobes aren't developed until close to that time, around twenty three, and all that type of stuff. So they, and that's and that's the the lobe that. Um, where reasoning takes place. And so now you have these young couples trying to navigate life. Now you got the pressures of just like y'all in school. So you got that thing, Um, education and peer pressure on campuses and just first time out your parents' house, you're trying to navigate Mm -hmm. what feels like adulthood. Um, And then you have these, these hormones raging like crazy and you're trying to deduct, okay, how do I, first of all, trying to even establish what manhood and womanhood truly looks like mm-hmm. so you got all these things that you're navigating at this young age and um boom y'all end up uh getting engaged you said y'all moved in together at what at what point did y'all move in together we move in together about six months before we're got before married. we get married okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 is that where the the strong call for um to eradicate shacking and, 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 I'm gonna say eradicate, <laughs> eradicate shacking in the body of Christ. Is that, is, is that where that comes? So, so here's the deal. As you know, probably sixty to seventy percent of couples today live together. Right. I mean, it's just what has it has really become the 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 pathway for many couples to test out marriage, right? Yeah. To test out the person, right? To see if this is a good fit. So everybody does it. Sixty seven percent of couples they live together before they get married. Right. So. As a pastor, I want to help people, right? I want to, I want to, I, we try to teach on marriage and family regularly because we're trying to give people solid foundation on how to build that. Good. And so when you talk about that, you've got to deal with the whole issue of shack and cohabitation because it's become such a pathway. Yeah. So as I, I was doing a series on singles, I was going to preach on let's get married or let's just live together. So I was talking to my team. I was like, listen, um, I can't preach about something without giving people a pathway to really honor God in it, right? Good. So I prepared, so we said, I said, this is what I want to do. I'm going to preach this sermon, right, which I did on that particular Sunday. And when I preached the sermon about cohabitation, I said several things. One, you don't decide to do it, you slide into it, right? You, you never, it's never something we're going to do boom, 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 boom. It starts out with a toothbrush and a yeah. little, 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 little bag, a toiletry bag, and, and goes to a, a duffel bag, uh, and then goes to a couple boxes, and then goes to a key, right? I mean, it just, over time, somebody go from a drawer to half the closet. It's just, and so we never really, so because we slide into it, it doesn't have the clarity of the lines. Are we, are yeah. we exclusive? What's this yeah. mean? And it leads, it makes a relationship very, very complicated. We That's talked good. about just God's word, that it's not just the living together, it's the second a relationship that ultimately is birth out of you guys just just taking a relationship this way and then we talked about that in most cases it doesn't do what it said we thought it, it doesn't lead to healthier marriages it doesn't lead to better relationships there's a higher divorce rate for those that live together than those that don't and so why is that i think i think it all of those i think all those factors tribute contribute to that right the lack of clarity about boundaries and what we're doing and why are we here the the ongoing sexual relationship that clouds us from getting to know each other it becomes yeah. about the sex not about each other yeah i think the whole framework for it 
uh, actually kind of undermines building relationships in the way God has called us to. So what did you feel when y'all, the six months that y'all cohabitated together, did you feel a division? Did you feel a division, a divide, arguing over stuff that didn't make sense? Or what, what did I you feel? I felt like this is not going to work. I, I was just... <laughs> I was completely uncomfortable. He I, I got put out my my parents' house. I got put mm. out, and I needed a place to stay. And half my furniture was at our house, so I went back and said, "Listen, I needed a place to stay. I had no place to go." Uh, but I knew it, it just, just it just it just we were, like I said we were trying, yeah. And us living in the same it just, spot it just, together, it just ain't gonna I was happen. excited. That, that, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be excited? honest. Why are you excited? I was excited because I was like, we're getting married in like six months. <laughs> And um, she said, I was excited. Yeah, Brian's was talking ex- about man. I'm just here by default. I don't got kicked yeah, out. He was, bless his heart. He was. He felt so guilty oh, and God. like he would not give it up. And I kept feeling like, what did? People, people have told us if you get engaged, you can start doing it, right? Yeah. You start having sex. It, there were all these little myths that people would say, hey, listen, y'all engaged now. Y'all free. I was like, man, listen, I don't know about that one. But yeah. that, <laughs> dudes are talking, <laughs> proposing to everybody. Hey, girl, what's up with this ring on your finger? I have no idea. And then we were fighting, like, um, I remember we, were, remember we were doing our premarital yeah. counseling, and the yeah. guy who was, the pastor who was doing our premarital counseling, oh, yeah, we yeah, were yeah. in session, and we were, like, fighting. I don't even know what we were fighting about. <laughs> I remember he just was like, hold on. He said, are y'all having sex? Are y'all having sex? <laughs> he was like, how do you know? I, well, I like, told him. Let me just tell him. I mean, he, he could tell our relationship was so messed he's, up. He's like, listen, yeah. something is not right in this deal. Y'all, y'all wait. Like, he was looking, he just was like, I don't remember he closed his Bible or the book. He's like, y'all having sex? <laughs> Because y'all are all like, over the place. What, are you, what do you speak of? <laughs> what do you speak of? Not me. Not us. But yeah, yes. it was crazy. So he when he closed the book, he closed that book. Yes. Um, but I remember uh, that night he came when he got kicked out. I did. <laughs> Back then he was like, I didn't get kicked out. I left. I was like, oh, okay. So I remember I told him, I said, oh, I got to call my parents. I got to tell him. He's like, you got to call your parents. Yeah, for real. And I was like, they pay my bills. I can't live like this. I said, I can't live with them knowing, you know, he was like, man, you can't tell your parents. I was like, they understand. So I remember I called, I think, I, yeah, I called my mom. And I remember my mom was like, oh, Stephanie, please don't get pregnant. Y'all got six months. Oh, please. And um, <laughs> I don't think she told my dad, though. Yeah, she went straight there. Don't get listen. pregnant. Yeah, she's like, please, Stephanie, don't get pregnant. I was like, man, listen, this is, this is not going to help us get. So here's what happened. My brother called me. Mm-hmm. And says, "Hey man, just checking on you." And I told him what I got put out. He said, "Man, let me take pay your next month's rent." Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh man, now mind you, I didn't have no month's rent because I was living. <laughs> I didn't tell him I was living, but he, but, oh, but he didn't me, tell him? I don't remember. I just remember, yeah. I remember he said, "Let me take care of your rent for you." He took your rent. Hey, how much is your rent? Uh, 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 three hundred, <laughs> five hundred. I don't three, know. Five, 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 three, five, 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 three so twenty-five. He, he helped me get out." Right. So my brother paid my rent. I got me another spot and we just took care of that and moved out. Just had basics in that spot. So that's why y'all do that at the church. So that's why we do the church. So when, when we so at the church, what we do if we do th- we give them three options, right? We share the message and we say, hey, listen, number one, you can uh uh, uh move away from this, yeah, move away from this ideal of doing relationship this way. Right? It's not gonna be or what you want long term based on what God says. Number two is a move out. If you move out, we're going to pay your first month's rent. We're going to cover you just like my brother covered for me. I love that. We want to be a blessing to you. We're going to help you get out of this I thing. I love Cause, it. Because sometimes you get there and you know it's not work out yeah. for you, but you don't have a pathway out. And I the third it. option we give couples is uh, it's, it's the 90-day cohabitation challenge, which is we're going to get you married in 90 days. You're going to go through 10 weeks of counseling. Uh, and then while you go through 10 weeks of counseling, we're going to take care of the wedding. Let's go. We'll give you a free wedding dress, free tuxedo, free wedding, the rings, reception. reception. We got everything covered. You focus on a relationship. Let us focus on the wedding. And so we give them a 90 day challenge. The funny part is when we do it in that service, like we tell you, if you want to take the 90 day marriage challenge or cohabitation challenge, you got to meet us at three o'clock or two o'clock after church. So you got like a two hour window. <laughs> To be able to have your conversation. It's some awkward moments. I've, I've heard mm-hmm. some, but 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 we we meet so many couple men to show up in that room, ready to honor God, ready to take the next step, 
but they just never had a pathway, right, to be able to say, we want to do it. We just had nobody to really help us know how to get there. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really cool project. For There's us. a lot of things I love about y'all, but that's what I love most about y'all is that. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, when I first saw that, I was just like, that's what the body of Christ oh, looks like. Thanks, mm -hmm. Because it's so, because you got to think about it. Y'all know the churches that we come from where sure. they're throwing fire and brimstone. You're going to hell, you're shacking without giving nobody a solution, sure. without giving them, like you said, a pathway. Sure. Sure. And so you're saying, listen, hey, we got no stones to throw. We've been there. Yeah, been mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is extend the same grace that my brother extended to me. We're going to mm -hmm. help you. We're not going to condemn you. And then after this 90 days, you're going to find out whether or not y'all going to be together right. or not. But right. it's yeah. like the rubber finna meet the road here because right. all this, you know, like, like, like they used to say in the old days, you either going to use the bathroom or get off the pot. Right. You know, and it's saying that y'all sitting up here and this relationship is going nowhere. Say a gentleman, you holding up the woman and she ain't getting any younger and you have no, mm -hmm. you have no desire to marry her right. you just mm -hmm. sitting there um and that's why i said i honor y'all for championing this cause that. uh because it's absolutely beautiful um i end up doing a black love um a black love matter ceremony back oh, in 2020 wow. where mm -hmm. i sponsored uh four couples getting married it ended up being three one of them and i'm falling out but it was three couples that got married during the pandemic mm -hmm. and uh i had it sponsored and all that but that was one of those things that i looked at y'all and admired oh, and i wow. said mm -hmm. i want to do that wow. you know what i'm saying wow. i said this is beautiful because y'all had at, at, at the most how many couples have y'all had get married in one ceremony so we've done it Four times over the last 13 years, mm -hmm. we've, we've married over 100 couples. Beautiful. Uh, probably the largest group we had, well, I think, was 18. And that was in, what, 20? Oh, man, you know, the first one was 2009. And so we've done it every three years ever since then. So that's what y'all do every three years? Every three years. We do it again. Every three years, I'll do a sermon series, put that message in there, and we'll invite couples. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the coolest part, right? is I think it gives the man permission. You know, a lot of a lot of times we talk about cohabitation, it's really not the woman's issue, right? It's really the man who won't take the initiative. Yes. And so when you create a safe place for the brother to say, you know what, let's do this. Let's let's figure because some guys I've met, everybody in their, in their family is cohabitated. They don't yes. have they don't have one healthy brother yep. that showed them or model for them how to do it, right? Exactly. And so for them it's a it's a safe place for the brother to say, you know what? I do want to honor you. I do want to love you. I do want to commit to you. And so, uh, I mean, it's for us, I think it's been a real testimony. Yeah. That this is what the, our, this is what Christ is all about. It's redemption. Yes. So no matter where I am, he can take us and put us in a whole new place. So we watch, we've seen couples, man, that may have two kids, three kids, right? But the coolest part, when all their family come and yeah. they're cheering for them and they're so mm -hmm. proud of them, they finally are getting married, right? Uh, man, it, 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 it is, uh, I think it, it's a powerful, beautiful testimony. So what we do with the couples, what we found out over time that the couples need a lot of support. So we, yeah. we, get, we get them married. We give them a mentor for one year. Good. We try to connect them to a small group. So they're in a couples group for one year. We surround them with support. Yeah. And that helps them to get through that one year well so that they can build from there. And so, uh, man, it's we see them every Sunday. We get to see some of those same couples yeah. that, we, that we watch them come to faith. We watch them get baptized. We watch them get connected to the church. We watch them now step into marriage and relationship, mm -hmm. raise their kids. I mean, it's... Uh, um, we feel like God has really blessed that effort. And actually, the other cool thing about it is it's not just young couples. We have oh, couples it's all that over. they've been like be your parents' age, and I'm like, yo, shake it. <laughs> Listen, and it so, ain't just the young people. Mother, mother, mother be, <laughs> grandmother. I mean, who's the oldest that? Has you know, been I'm about to ask you, what's the what's the longest have y'all seen people that's been living together? Like ten we, years? Like ten years? Yeah, we had one in about ten years, mm -hmm. and they just had never got married. Did they ever have plans when you begin to unpack that? I Did think they... some of them have had plans, just no. So expense is an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They feel like they can't afford it or whatever. And then sometimes they just get stuck. Right? Yep. You get there and you, and so I had one, one, one person that said, I didn't know my parents weren't married. Like, yeah, like they, they, did, like they nobody, didn't know. Nobody knew mm -hmm. that they had never got married. Here's the other piece of Terry is I think, I think when you hold up a high view of marriage, right? Even if people don't take the challenge, I met a guy in the airport. 
He ran up to the pastor. I got the ring, man. I proposed to her. So even if they never take the challenge, our hope is that when you hold up a high view of marriage, Teach. that yeah. this is what God has called you to do. Teach. You don't have to take the challenge, but hopefully it helps motivate you that if you want to honor God in your relationship, yes. go ahead and take this next step, man. That's go good. ahead and commit. Mm-hmm. You don't have to just, just, um, just do an imitation. You can ask God for the real thing. Let's resource you and give you what you need so you can do it. So, yeah. When you look at this book, Made to Last, um, and you parallel it to your relationship, if I were to ask you, Stephanie, how is that applicable to y'all's love journey? Mm, uh, you know, Made to Last, I feel like why that represents us is because just the different seasons of our marriage. I think in anything, there's a season. Right. So there's a season where it's just, it's great and it's fabulous and so on. I would love to sit here and be like, yeah, our first year was that. No, <laughs> it wasn't. And I feel like the one thing that helped us with Made to Last was that we surrounded ourselves with different people or just different resources. So just like you go to a conference for your job or you're reading this or you're surrounding yourself with people to help you do better. Yeah. That's kind of what we did. And that's what Concord was for us. Cause we weren't pastor Brian and Stephanie Carter. When we came to Concord, we came to Concord in 98. We were just Brian and Stephanie. Oh, y'all came there as members. Yeah. We yeah, were just members. Just, yeah. And what attracted us to Concord was Pastor Bailey and Sister Bailey. And what they, what he was teaching and what um, that church was doing was we just saw actual couples that looked like they loved each other. <laughs> and that was, like, important for us because yeah, we were fighting like cats and dogs that yeah. first year. So to walk in that church, like, we got, we graduated in May. We got married in June. And then we moved to Dallas shortly after that. And then we joined Concord in November. Wow. And so I remember like we went to um, they had like a couples a couples conference. We went to that like we won the award for being like the the couple that had been married, like the earliest had been married and so on. (laughs) But but just to be surrounded by those couples, those couples who have been married 10, 20, 30 plus years, they gave us such wisdom. And so I felt like they just gave us the infrastructure for our marriage just to grow and then also to hold us accountable and be like, no, nah. because both our parents, um, our parents have been married. Like my parents are, are divorced and so on. So we both had seen just different types. Like, like my parents, this is probably why they're divorced now is because they both lived their separate lives. Yeah. They both worked, they came yeah. home, mm-hmm. they, you know, they did not do things together. And then his parents were very traditional. So they've been, your parents have been married like 47 years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. They've been married 47 years, but his dad was kind of real old school. Like, like he clear his throat, like leave the room, like that kind of, like that kind of old school Yeah. and like wear a hat, that kind of old school preacher type. And so I kept feeling like, oh, you should have married me because <laughs> I'm not, my mom had taught me to be you know, very strong. <laughs> She's one of those strong, one black, of those strong, strong black women. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a man. I got this. I don't need a man. I got this. Yeah, yeah. I can raise a kid by myself. Yeah, I can cut bad. my yard. I can, yeah, I was, I can change yeah. out my alternator. I don't need no man. Yeah. So I was that. And so made to last, um, I had to learn how to submit. And I had to, I, I kept oh, it's looking. cuss word. It's cuss word to some That's of these modern women. Yeah. But submission, how I saw submission was in my 20s, I saw it as him basically standing over me mm. with his feet. Like I'm not going to demonstrate, but yeah, like with his, about this on just you. on me. And that's Ooh. how I saw submission. So I would fight it. Anytime he would like say something or want me to do something, I'm like, you know, my dad, you know, that kind of, it's just, <laughs> I'm just doing some really stupid stuff. Y'all. But you were raised in the household with a father. I was raised in the household with a father, but I also saw my mom kind of be like, I'm not doing that. Like my dad be like, no. And she's like, oh, okay, watch this. So, and that just does not work. It just does not work. <laughs> Did you feel, you felt that while you were married to her? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's strong, man. Which attracted me to her, right? Why? Like I, 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 I admired her strength, her leadership, 
right? Her passion, her tenacity. He wasn't like that. All that was sexy to me, right? But then when we get married, it's like, uh oh, this is this is not wait a minute. Now how we go how this is not what I saw. This is not quite what I expected or planned on. I expected for me to say something and you to say, Oh yes, whatever you want. Or 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 go go do whatever you I I, I had this I was a bit Because that's what um, he saw. I, yeah. I was a bit Oh yeah, from chauvin. his family. Yeah, that's what I was he saw. a bit chauvinist in terms of how I saw it. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I didn't really understand and marriage and, and manhood. I didn't. So I thought I say it and, and you do she it. do it. That's what I thought, right? And that that didn't that did not go how, well at all. That's funny that how y'all was y'all was raised in two totally opposite, opposite households. households. Mm-hmm. Because your mom was a strong mom, like I ain't finna do nothing. His mom was probably like, you know, yes. whatever yeah. you like, right. whatever right. you like. Yes. Right. And he comes in bringing that ideology to you and you like N word, you got me messed up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, what? what? What is this? He's like, hold on. I, I, this ain't what I signed up for. Because you have to remember, we went to two separate schools. So I only saw him like on the weekend. <laughs> so, you know, when we see each other, it's just lovey dovey because I've missed you and this, right. that, this, that. But right. when you start doing real life, I see you every day. <laughs> that was a different situation. That was a different situation. How bad did it get? Did you ever get to the point of wanting or contemplating divorce? Oh, no. Yeah, we don't use the D word. I don't think we. I yeah, think we, we just didn't like each other. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, didn't like I, we, each other. we wouldn't talk to each other for a few days or a week. We wouldn't. We would ignore <laughs> each other. We, we would ice each other out. We would freeze each other out. We would. Uh, we would do that. We didn't necessarily, we necessarily real get petty. to the, 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 We just would be incredibly petty, tit for tat. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we might cuss a little bit or, or call each other out their name. I mean, it was. It was. No, um, we weren't doing do that. Oh yeah, we did. did. Yeah. I, I, I didn't say I did it, but yeah. But, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at her. Look, Stephanie. Stephanie, a thug. She's in a thug. Look at her thug. No, we, yeah, we had some situations, right? And then, you know, marriage is hard. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I mean, marriage is hard. Yeah. The communication, not seeing eye mm-hmm. to eye, fighting over money. Yeah. Uh, she wants to, she, I want to go back to school. She wants a house, fighting over who gets what right. Uh, we don't have time to unpack stuff. that. We, part. Got a lot, we got a lot I of stuff. I know some women right, right, like, right. yeah, girl, right. you know So, I mean, we just, uh, <laughs> We two teachers. We're yeah. both broke, right? We got debt. Um, he had debt. Okay, okay. All right. So, <laughs> I so I ain't so, had no debt. I ain't had no debt. <laughs> yeah. so, so I mean, it just it's just a lot to deal with, right? Two different families, yeah. right? Expectations, mm-hmm. uh, dreams, and ambitions about what we want to do, right? I want to one day be a pastor, right? She don't know what that looked like, neither do I, right? <laughs> so that what's that gonna do? And she teaching, got her aspirations to be a principal. Like we just got this collision of. Of who I am, who she is, how this gonna happen, what's this gonna look like? I mean, it was just those early years. I would say were very rocky for us. When I'm hearing that, that's interesting because y'all have a school, don't y'all? What what, what y'all do in education? (sighs) Right, we don't have a school at the church, but we both were educated for quite a while. Yeah. So I taught third grade, and he taught middle school. Yeah. So that's interesting. Y'all both were school teachers. Yeah, we Mm -hmm. both were educators. So yeah, because for me, for a pastor. Every pastor I knew had another job. I didn't yeah. know anybody that did the full time. So I went to education knowing I could it could go, yeah, flow together yeah, really well. Yeah, cross yep. pollinate. Yep, yep, yep. And so when you got the call to ministry, at what age were you? So at twenty, uh I've been twenty five. I taught school for two years. Mm-hmm. And then uh Pastor Bailey, who was a pastor at our church, he he invited me to join staff. And I was like, What? You can work at the church? Like, what does it do? It's just one they only work one day a week. What you want me to do? And man, and so he invited me to join the church. And I found out there's a whole situation, right? There's a whole staff that's yeah. there, man. It was a dream come true for me. And so for two years, I was uh, probably twenty six, I, I I was on staff for two years. And then in, right at the start of the third year, he asked me to be his assistant pastor and successor. Which meant that I would be sharing services, leading the staff, and if anything. What did he say? Hold on, you can't just throw that yes, out sir. there. Yes, sir. That's yeah. a lot. I can't just throw that out there. It's time to be man. your successor. That's a lot. That's a lot. So what did he say? What What happened? How did that happen? Man, you know, at 19 years old, no, 17. At 17, I had written. I had to do a college entrance uh, essay to write to, to to get a scholarship. They would say, "What's your dream?" And my dream at 17 was to have this church. They had a school, had a community center. I grew up in the hood, and I saw how young people didn't have a lot of options. Yeah. And so I wanted to create this space where they could have those options. On top of that, uh, and so I felt like, so I wrote that. That was my dream at 17, was to do this, right? And so um, 
And so I go on education, pursue my career. Even when I graduate, I said, listen, send me to the hood. Like, I want to be where our kids can yeah. see black men and see black role models. That's good. So I taught math and science for two years. And then when he asked me to join staff, I'm like, man, this is a dream. Yeah. I get to join a staff and work at a church. This is all I've ever wanted to do. And I'm just working. And God gives me favor, man. He he. The pastor puts me in his, his, his Bible study, his discipleship group. And so every Saturday at 7 a.m. for a year, we're meeting with him and 12 other guys just studying the word, talking about leadership and manhood and ministry, sharing our stories. He he asked me to become an elder at the church. I'm like 26. I I was at that young age. Even, I'm like, do you even know me? But he tells me <laughs> that the Sunday we joined, which is a year prior, uh, 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 one of my college professors, Dr. Katie Perry, was one of his college classmates. And she says, the Sunday I joined, that he said to her, listen, that young man is special. You need to keep an eye on him. And he told me later, he said, listen, when she recommends somebody, you believe you take that mm -hmm. to the bank. And so all these moments, right? I think when God has a plan for your life, right? When there's favor on your life, like you can't even connect the dots At yourself. All. You just walk yeah. and watch God work behind the scene. And so you, I joined staff. He puts me in this group. He, he, he lets me be an elder. I start serving. And then two years into that, he had already said he was going to retire at 65, but he become, uh, he became ill with cancer. So right. he kind of expedited things. And so they had an initial candidate that met all the qualifications, had the education, had mm -hmm. the experience, had the uh, degrees, had all that stuff. So the other candidate had passed it before? He, yes, he had passed before, had all those skill set. He had chosen to stay at his his church. And so he comes to me one day, and Pastor Bay calls me over the house. and says, Brian, um, you're my plan B. <laughs> That's a direct quote. That's a direct quote. He says, Brian, you're my plan B. You're, you're young and you're gifted. And I think if I, if, if I work with you, you can be ready. He says, go home, talk to your wife, because the church is voting uh, the next couple of days. So y'all decide if this is what you want to do to be my assistant pastor and my successor. So I called my wife up. I'm like, hey, baby, um, <laughs> Pastor Benny just told me he wants me to be his assistant pastor and successor. I know you're I don't, I don't have the education. <laughs> I don't have the experience. I haven't pastored before. I don't meet any of the qualifications. But they're going to change the qualifications <laughs> so that it fits who I am. Preach, <laughs> preach. Preach, that's a, that's a whole sermon that's right there. They, yeah. they go in and rewrite the stuff. <laughs> then she says, I guess so. I said, me too. I, said, I don't know what we're signing up for. But hey, let's <laughs> we were so naive. I think that's what saved us. We did. Like, we had no clue. We didn't. Like, when he said, I, like, when he called, I remember I was on the phone. With, I was on the phone with one of my, I was on the phone with one of my college friends. And so he's like, you got to get off. And I was like, oh. And so I just remember him saying, yeah, it goes through the whole thing. I said, everybody knows it's, it's so-and-so. He was like, he said no. And I said, it's you? <laughs> Listen, I've been on staff two years. Mm -hmm. I've been at the church four years. I was a member two years. I've been on staff two years. So I'm like, like how did I, right? What is this? And so it, it, so we have the church meeting. They vote me in. And then we start sharing everything. He's preaching one service. I'm preaching the other. I'm leading the staff. And then a year into it, the Lord calls him home. I'm 20, I think I'm 29 at this point. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the senior pastor of Concord Church. Just this huge me mega church as it, as it was then. Yeah. And, and I'm following a legend. Following I know it. a giant. Street named after. Woo. <laughs> Listen, but, uh, mm. man. Look, we're all like, <laughs> Because I know y'all go back and think about those years of just just trying to figure it out. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. A lot of times people don't know what pastors go through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I talk to a lot of pastors, and they though they um, love what they do, it is not met with – I mean, it's met with a lot of – adversity where y'all like what am i really doing i'm over here trying to serve these people they hate me they doing this i don't know why, why am i doing i could have done any job why am i choosing this out of all professions um why why do y'all do it man it's just been a calling man i don't think you do ministry as a career choice i mm -hmm. think it has to be a calling from god 
something. And all of us can get called. You can get right. called into the work you're doing right. and, and, mm-hmm. the, and the way God has used you in your space and other people and finance and others. I think there's call on many of our lives that we have to answer, right? And just yeah. say, I'm, I'm doing this because something in me won't let go of what mm. this. So I think from a teenager to, to now, I think God has just had a call on my life to serve people. So I don't care if it would have been 30 people, right? Or in a classroom or at the church. It don't make a difference to me, the audience. I just think it's answering the call. And that's really what, so when she married me, you know, we still didn't know what that looked like, but Mm -hmm. she, she had enough faith in the Lord and in me to trust whatever God would have in store. And so, man, so yeah, so it's, it's hard, right? Uh, There's ups and downs, right? Um, It's demanding, right? Because people have an expectation. You live in the glass bowl. So people can be very judgmental of everything you do. But man, you, you you're doing it for God, right? Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. whew, I mean, but, but at the same time, there's <laughs> a lot of joy in it, right? Yeah. The, the joy of watching people grow, the mm-hmm. joy of watching people heal, the joy of watching men become men, women become women. I mean, it's. I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like my life and our lives have. Um, I feel like we've 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 tried to honor the Lord and tried mm-hmm. to make an impact, and it hadn't been easy. We made our mistakes along the way. But uh, it's been a joy that God would trust us enough. Yeah, that's right. To say, right hey, I want you to lead my people, man. That's a that's an honor that God doesn't give to everybody. No. And for God to say, hey, I, I trust y'all with this assignment, we feel deeply, deeply humble that he let us do this. Stephanie, when you first found out that he was a preacher, <laughs> it turned you off when you was in college. So then um, at what point did you settle in this thing and, and this role and this calling that God has you? Because just as it's a calling for him, it's a calling for you. Right. So, um, you know, I was I was teaching when he got the call that he was plan B. We had just had our first child and um, she's probably like a couple of months old. Mm-hmm. And then I had just gotten a promotion in Fort Worth ISD. So I was now an instructional specialist. So in Fort Worth ISD, how it works is you're an instructional specialist, then you're vice principal and a principal. So I was kind of like, OK, yeah, you go and do that church <laughs> thing. That's good for you. <laughs> And um, so he's living his best church life. Yeah. He's in seminary. These are all things that we had prayed about. Okay. These are also things that he shared with me when we were dating. Mm. So it wasn't like a surprise, yeah. like as far as, I mean, these were goals he had set. Like, I want to go to seminary. I want to, I want to eventually pastor. And of course, I do not know what that looks like. Like my family's religious, but we yeah. were not church. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think I have any pastors in my family, so it was completely new. So, like, even that church vote, I remember when he was like, "Yeah, we got a church vote." I was like, oh, "Okay, well, I have a meeting with my teachers, and then I will, and then I will come." And I was like, really expecting, like, I'm no lie, I was really expecting this church vote to be like maybe like a couple of people, like maybe fifty people. The whole church was packed, including at that time, um, Concord had a balcony, the balcony, uh, and yeah. the, all the floor was packed. To the point where I sat in the back. And I remember I kept like, I was holding my child. Basically, I was holding my child so tight because I kept feeling like if I'm about to pass out and drop her and they're about to do this vote. And as he's going through, just like, this is what I need. Because everybody knew it was going to be this one person. So when they was like, well, he's my plan B. Everybody's like, I don't know him. You can like, you know, they don't know me either. So they sitting in the back like, I don't know who is that. <laughs> and then the day of the vote, he's look, like, I just remember you had on like black slacks and a white shirt. So he's, just, I just kept on like, oh my Lord, what are we getting into? <laughs> and then he was like, after they, you know, Pastor, ba- Pastor Bailey was before his time. Mm-hmm. just to pr- how he prepared Concord, how he prepared the city, how he prepared the world. There are people to this day who use what how he did his succession as a way to do succession in their church. Um, just He was just a man before his time because I think about how he prepared Concord and how they just loved us. Like he told specific people like, I need you, mm-hmm. I need y'all. And they did that. They did that. Concord... Yeah, I can't say enough about the church. They how did God prepare us. you? Ooh, how God prepared me was he really he really humbled me. How? Because 
I just had my own career and I kind of felt like you're doing that little church thing. You go on and be a little pastor. That's great for you. <laughs> and I'm going to be over here doing my little education thing and my child. And, you know, this I'll navigate this you over here. Be a little pastor. Yeah, go on That's over so there. That's so cute. You just and, go right over there and go preach. And then God, like, God used my own words against me. Um, one thing that we had talked about in our premarital counseling was both of us can't have two demanding jobs. And at this time we are, we have children and I know some people can balance that. But for me growing up in my household, both my parents were pursuing their careers yeah. full that, that was just head on. Like they both got their masters. They both were just, it was just a crazy time. And so far as a child that impacted me to the point where I was like, when I get married, that's not going to be how I run my house. So I remember at first I was really trying to hold on to it. And then God was like, no, no, you can't do this. And I remember I was like picking my picking up my daughter from daycare. And I remember she was trying to like talk to a little kid, but they were dead sleep. And it was like God was like, that's going to be you. That's going to be your kid. Because the basically the teacher was like, oh, you can't wake him up. His mom drops him off at the crack of dawn and doesn't, he's the last one to leave. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's just so sad. And then it was like, I was like, that's going to be you. That's going to be you, fool. You can't, you, can't, you can't do it all. And that's the one thing I had to learn is that I can't do it. It's going to be you, fool. <laughs> yeah. So I, God and I have this kind of relationship. But um, but I remember him even telling me like, Stephanie, you, you got to come home. Like after the birth of our second child, he's like, you got to come home. And I remember my principal was like, yeah, no. And I can feel like, no, I can do it. She was like, no, nah, Stephanie, he, you know, you have to be, you have to be present. And um, once I prayed about that and once, um, once I realized that, I was able to make that transition. Now that first year when I was the first lady, I was, I would hide, like those first couple of years, I hid behind my children. I did like I kept feeling like this is you. This is not me. I'll hold down the home front. But um it just kind of scared me because it was just a completely different world. Understandable. Uh how did you take that? Did you feel like she just wasn't invested or how did you feel about that? No, um, I mean she gave up a lot, right? Yeah. To uh to put her career on the back burner, right? I mean, that's a and I don't think I understood it then. Of course. Right. Not. I think I understand mm -hmm. it more now that the sacrifices she made, right, for our family, for our ministry, were significant. And so, um, I mean, she's always been supportive. I mean, I've always tried to be supportive for her, but, I mean, she's always been extra supportive of me. And so, you know, I was just grateful for, for, for I just knew it was a lot. Yeah. I mean, we had church was consistent, marriages, funerals, people calling mm -hmm. us, meetings. It was just so demanding that her her making that decision to come home helped us. I mean, I, I think it helped our marriage. Yeah. yeah. I think it helped our kids to have some sense of stability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and not that we couldn't, but, but I mean, I think her, For her, our household. her, yeah. Yeah. her decisions, right. I think have paid. I mean, she has saved so many things for our kids, for our marriage, for our relationship. So, it's just it's hard to just run, run, run when y'all both are running yeah. and you got kids and y'all running in all these different directions. It's so mm -hmm. much stress on a marriage. And I think early on making some of those decisions, I think it's paid out paid well for us. Stephanie, what would you say to the modern woman who says, see, I don't like what she just said, that she had to leave her career to go <laughs> sure, follow him? Sure. Like that, yeah. see, I'm not going to do that because yeah. before I met him, right. I'm mm -hmm. making upwards of, you know, well I'm making more than the him. six figures. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm making yeah. more than him. Why yeah. in the world would God ever require me to leave this job? I'm making $300,000 a year and I'm about to go <laughs> be with the, whatever this other guy is doing. Now, nah, that's not God. See, what's wrong is that you, you know, they, they will yeah. read you yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so how would you speak to that listen everything that you just said now i wasn't making three hundred thousand, but i was <laughs> when he was on staff at the church before like before pastor or whatever just as a staff pastor i was making more than him right and so oh god listen i'm telling you will you make more i don't know <laughs> will yeah. you make more than your spouse 
you have to be careful that you don't use that against them yeah. or weaponize it against them. And I was weaponizing it against them. He was like, yeah, I went to Papa Do's. Well, you went to Papa Do's? Uh, wait a minute. No. Where you keep Papa Do's money from? Because I'm over here eating that KFC. <laughs> so I found it somebody. Yeah, and like, I love, like, one thing I love about Brian, Brian is like, I, like, Brian is grace and mercy. Y'all, he is the sweetest. Brian, but, you couldn't go to Papa Do's? <laughs> Brian is she grace and mercy. little lease, though. <laughs> and it was like, Brian was like, eh, like, you can't be talking to me like this. <laughs> and so, um, just straight up masculinity, bro. I had, to do, yeah. I had, to, do, I had to do like a self, I had to do like a self check on myself. Oh, that's funny. And then, like, God, like, changed that up. Where he was making more. And then he's like, so. <laughs> so you going to Papa Do's? <laughs> yeah, like, so you need to be. <laughs> and your budget is. <laughs> but for that season, it was really like, a, I would love to, I would I would be lying if I said, oh, it was, it was fine. No, it was, it was a hard, it was a hard season for me to, to sacrifice because I did not feel like he saw me. I did not feel like he saw the sacrifice. But then when I actually shared my heart instead of holding a grudge, and I wouldn't say I was holding a grudge, but when I felt like when I shared my heart to him, he saw me. And so and so I think, um, and it's not only did, was it hard then, for her, she still has had moments later in reflection yeah. of what could have been, right? Yeah. And so I've had to, like I said, I think I appreciated it more. But I think at the end of the day, Every couple got to figure out how they go do their life. Yeah. yeah. How you going right? to raise it could, your kids? It could be, the, could be yeah. the wife that goes and the man stays home yeah. mm -hmm. and, and covers for her and yeah. takes care. I mean, it don't make a difference who does it. Yeah. I just think what we learned is that we felt for our family, and this is what she told me even before we got married, was that we can't both run at full at 100%, yeah. right? I mean, it just, and maybe some couples can do it, but I, it was our, our experience was, mm -hmm. We just felt like something would suffer, particularly when, depending on the nature of the job and yeah. the role, right? Yeah. It's just, so you got to figure it out, right? So, yeah. So someone may say, hey, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, you better figure out what works for your house, yeah. right? What works for your relationship? Who's? But here's the thing, too. You got to compromise. Yeah. Yes. Everybody can't have your way. That's what marriage is. That's what it marriage is. Marriage is not you finding somebody to support your vision. <laughs> yeah. It's for yeah. you to go off and do what you want to yeah. do. Yeah. Marriage is two equal partners, yeah. right? We both valuable. Our careers both matter. We both got dreams but how do we come together and say what can we build together right uh and so that's the reality sometimes couples get married and they don't want to sacrifice they yeah. don't want to give up nothing they yeah. want to keep doing what they've been doing and don't realize that ain't marriage mm -hmm. right that's a friendship but that ain't marriage marriage is us compromising and figuring out what we're gonna do together because we can't we can't it's not going to end well if you're committed to you more than you commit to us yeah. what are some of the um let's say about two or three key principles that's found in this book? Man, the, the first opening section talks about trust. Mm -hmm. It talks about how foundational trust is for relationships. Yeah. And just really gives you a game plan for how to cultivate trust in a relationship. If mm. we go build anything, whether it's a friendship, a marriage, parent, the child, foundational to all of it it's is just. can I trust you? Facts. Being a mm -hmm. trustworthy person, doing what you say you're going to do, showing up like you say you're going to show up, <laughs> respecting me. These are found. These ain't. Yeah. These. This is not high level PhD. Yeah. This is foundational stuff. Yeah. That when you do it, it changes the whole deal. When you when you say what you're going to say, when you mean what you're going to mean, yeah. when you respect foundational stuff. The other piece there's another chapter in there that talks about communication. And how it is to build healthy communication between two people so that you can, uh, so I can understand you, right? Yeah. That I'm not just listening. I'm, I'm going to learn how to listen to you, right? Hear you out. I just go talk over you. I'm, I'm going to learn how to speak. Um, I'm going to learn how to speak from the heart, not just from the head, not just read you for filth. I want to help you to understand <laughs> to read you how, how it made me feel, right? Yeah. And 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 what what's, where we go from there. There's another chapter in there called Resilience. Mm. And it talks about that strong relationships have to learn how to go through stuff together. Yes. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that strong relationships are not just about the happenings. You have to suffer. You got to go yeah. through something. 
whether it is us walking together through the loss of a parent or whether us going through one of us going through some anxiety and depression issues, mm -hmm. all of us will go through something, but it's going through it together yeah. that really seals and strengthens and builds mm -hmm. the relationship. If y'all don't, if you quit every time something gets hard <laughs> or something is challenging or something is difficult, you're never going to build anything at all. But as you go through the struggle, it's the struggle that seals you together as you watch God work in your lives and work on it, work with each other together. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's it's a lot in that book that can help people build. They can do it as a Bible study. They can do it as a couple study. They can get some friends. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it can be used however a person wants to use it to really help them to grow in their relationships. Something about that word resilience. When you said that, Stephanie and I uh, harmoniously said, yeah, <laughs> uh, resilience hit different. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially when you know uh, when you've been through some stuff. Uh, I've been through a divorce. Uh, seven years ago, and uh, I thank God that my ex-wife and I are still cool. Mm, um, but that was one of the things I prayed for. I said, God, I want you yeah. to teach me how to divorce her with grace. Mm. Mm. And because there was nothing wrong with her, it was just I didn't feel like we were aligned. And um, But just divorce with grace. But one of the things that when I think about resilience, what I aspire for in my and my next and final marriage, because it's going to be till death do we part, is that resilience mm -hmm. to be steadfast and unmovable, to be able to cover each other with grace, uh, to always find a safe space. When you said this, and I want to go back to this, Stephanie, when you were younger and you said you felt safe with him, what did you mean? It might have been our second, maybe our second or third date. And, you know, at this time, we're talking all the time and this, that, this, that. I feel like that's one thing that misses out on this generation Yeah, is that you lack communication. So with us talking all the time, I just really felt like I got to know him. And so I think it was like our third date, maybe our second or third date. And I just remember us... Um, I think this is when we were deciding that we were going to be boyfriend and girlfriend and be official and I just remember, we were talking about what we like about each other. And then I just told him, I said, it's a safeness with you. Mm. I don't feel like I have to be on guard with you. I don't feel like you're basically like you're trying to play me or you're just trying to use me or you're trying to get something from me. You actually are interested in who I am and you're actually interested in um not helping me reach my goal, but just you want to see me, you want to see me be great too. Mm. Not just you. Mm. Which is something that you'll also need to go back on. You had to go back on when now God had to make this life decision to right. become a pastor to go back because his true intent, you saw that at the very beginning and it's time for you to fall back on that and instead of feel like, okay, it's all about you and my career is to the wayside. So I love those moments where God give us those uh uh, where he takes us to that before place, mm -hmm. where it's that moment where you go, I really see his character. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I really see her character. Uh, I just opened this book to just see where it would land at, and this is perfect. Chapter six, words to the wise. Kindness makes a person attractive. If you would win the world, melt it. Do not hammer it. Alexander McLaurin. It says, Stephanie has a gift of encouragement, and she makes me feel like I can do anything. At times during our marriage, things have been tough. Not long after we got married, it was especially hard. Bills were stacking up. The phone company turned off our service, and it looked like a hole we'd never climb out of. I wanted to give up. I told her to take control of our finances <laughs> because I couldn't handle it. But she said, but she told me, no, we're going to do this together. Yeah. Why did you tell him no? You know what? And that and that first year of marriage. Oh my gosh! Those, yeah, that first year of marriage. He really was kind of chauvinistic. And somebody's like, he didn't show you this when y'all were dating. I was like, no. <laughs> he was Mr. Slow Jam Tape. He was baby face. He was baby face. He's baby boys face. Men. Boys, <laughs> boys to men. Boys to men. It's not boys to men album. That was okay. But anyway. Exactly. But anyway. Um, but I did mm. not tell him no because. He just, I could see the defeat in his eyes mm -hmm. because even though he was kind of chauvinistic and he felt like he was the man and I'm supposed to lead and I'm the head of the household and I'm supposed to lead like this, I just didn't see me ripping him apart. And then my mom had taught me this. Um, our first really big argument was when we were engaged and it was about where we were going to live. 
I did not want to live in Oklahoma City. No, no, no shade. No, no shade, no, no shade Oklahoma. 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 Okay, see. But I'd gone to school there for four years, and yeah, it was just time to go. And I remember my mom was like, have you told him that you don't want to live there? And she's like, what am I saying? I know you have. She's like, she's like Stephanie, have you prayed about it? And I was like, yes. She's like, okay, well, tell me how you're praying about it. And I was like, help this fool to realize that we don't, we need to be here and stuff. Exact, exact, no lie. That's how I was praying to God. And my mom was like, please stop doing that. That's not how you pray to God. And she was like, Stephanie, I need you to have faith in God and put your faith in God and not put your faith in your tongue. And so she was like, stop telling Brian, stop beating him over the head with you don't want to live here because he's not going to hear you. He's going to keep he's going to shut you down and you're going to be living in Oklahoma City. (laughs) And so you'll be the mayor of Oklahoma City. Yeah, like like, you're going to be living here. So stop saying it. She was like, instead, I want you to pray for the future husband he's going to be. Mm. Pray for the future father who's going to be. Pray for the future leader who's going to be. I just need you to stop saying that to him. And now I just need you to take that to God, but pray for him for the future he's going to be. And so when I did that, that was like my first real lesson in prayer and faith. And it was life changing. It was a game changer because we were kind of like fighting during that season. And um, and then January, like January, like, May, like when he got kicked out uh, <laughs> <laughs> or he left, he left, <laughs> he left, the, the jury's um, still out on that. <laughs> <laughs> he left. Um, there was a situation that happened and. In the past, I would have said something. So I'm going to tell that strong, that strong-willed woman on here, like, there's sometimes you just need to be quiet. Mm. You just need to be quiet, and you have to rest in the Lord. And you're like, no, nah, you don't know the type of Negro I have. <laughs> yes, I do, because I, <laughs> listen, whether he's a dreamer, whether he, whatever it is, yeah. there's sometimes you just need to be quiet. And there's, and then while you're quiet, pray for the words to say to him. There it is. Because I know physically I can I can't beat him up. I can't take him down, but verbally I could kill him. Oh yeah, women can boy. They can, I can assassinate kill you. a man. Listen. Ah. Be like, <laughs> Wait, ah. don't say it like that. <laughs> yeah. But and so when you knew that I felt like God pointed that strength that like that strength out to me and that weakness to me. You can either build him or you can kill him. Yes. So how are you gonna build him? And how I chose to build him was through prayer and not to say anything. Because those first couple of years, I was telling I'm like, what are you doing? Like, no, this is dumb. Like, yeah. you're just, like, killing them. So when the situation came up with the money, even as frustrating as it was, because if you're not a teacher, we only get paid once, once a, month. a month. And it's at the end of the month. Yep. So by the time you pay all your bills, you're broke the next yep. day. Yep. And so we'd be in Walmart. And the the car just declined, and I'm like, dude, you you the head, you you the money man. And so after like a couple of times of us having those types of arguments, he finally was like, you know what, I just give up. And he just looked so defeated. Mm-hmm. And so I had a choice: either I could have been some cocky woman, have been like, okay, dude, yeah, that's let, why. Let me let do me it. Do let it, me do it because you don't know. Yeah. And instead, I said. I had to take a pause. Now take a pause. You might have to count to 10 in your head, whatever it may be. You might have to like walk away because we had to set up boundaries Good. with our communication and how we talk to each other. So like anytime, like a, if I didn't agree with something, I, I couldn't let it show in my face. You know, we can let it show in our face. Yeah. Like for me, I could let it show in my face. I can let it show in my words. But in this situation, I learned like, just don't say nothing. Let it pause. Or I was saying a prayer. And then, like, once I calmed down, then I came back to him. I said, you know what? No, you can do this. Let's just do it together. That's better than, you don't know what you're doing. See, I could have been doing this all yeah. along and this, that, this, that. And to watch him from his face, because it was like he was expecting me. Yes. To just read him for filth, yeah. as he would say. And to come back and say, no, let's just do it together. And then to actually sit down and not, like, rip him to shreds or just say, see, I don't know, what, what do you... How did that hit with you when she said that? He probably was in shock. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knew it was about to go down. <laughs> you know, he'd be at Walmart and be embarrassed. Like, and we were living, like, in a white area, too, so it was really bad. It was just like, no, oh, these ladies looking at us like, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, I think, Part of that chapter talks about just the need for affirmation. There it is. Right? There is something in the chapter prior to it talks about acceptance. Yeah. Right? That you got to recognize who you're in relationship with. Yeah. Right? And so I think her seeing me for me 
my heart was in the right place. I really want to do right. I just was lacking some of the skill yeah. to be able to figure this thing out, right? So let's figure out this skill. I think that's different than somebody being arrogant. Don't mm-hmm. tell me nothing. I got yeah. this. This is my money, whatever. Yeah. So I think it was the fact that she accepted me. She valued me. And then she affirmed me, said, you know what? We can figure this out. We we, we can get to the right place. We can that. And so that's just, I think that's what what is so critical. Because sometimes we judge each other. Yeah. Right. Or sometimes we have these expectations of the person and that's just not who they are. Right. I mean, I think that yeah. a lot of relationships get in trouble because you're expecting something out of him or her. Yeah. And that that just that's just not who they are. Right. So don't you. Can't, you can't, that's just not how they roll. Right. That, that's not what they do. So watching her say, hey, man. Your heart's in the right place. You trying. You trying really hard. But but brother, listen, if I go to Walmart one more time and my car don't go through, we're gonna have some problems. So, so, so let's get over here. Let's get the Excel out. Let's map this thing out. Matter of fact, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a joint account. Yeah. We're gonna have our own two separate accounts. Yep. That way I can control my money. Yep. And I can make my own decisions. Yep. You got your own little car. You can control. <laughs> then we're gonna have this account right here. Yeah. That's where all the bills come out of. And we yep. don't touch that one. Right. Yep. So we had to learn, Good. right, yeah. how to put in the systems around yes. it. Because it wasn't a hard issue. It was just a skill issue. We Facts. just didn't know what we were doing, right? And so um, so I think that's all. And she's she's I mean, she's an ultimate encourager. She just has a way, and I think most many women can make a brother run through a brick wall. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, like when a sister tell you, encourage you, when she encourages me and she affirms me. Listen, I'm I'm ready. Listen, what what, what What you need? What you do? Yeah, Yeah. here go (laughs) Moses. Your yard, the neighbor yard, the neighbor (laughs) neighbor yard. You be like, what in the world? There is a connection there that will stir up something in you to say, you know what, I can do this. Yeah. Or let me let that go. Let me focus on this. There was something, and she's just my whole life. I mean, she has been just a breath of fresh air to encourage me, to inspire me. And I, I'm thankful for that. I love how at the end of each chapter, it has this con- consider this and it has uh, these questions like at the end of the one that you just mentioned um, is have you ever had a relationship with or die due to a lack of mutual appreciation? That's mm-hmm. a chapter about appreciation. What could have been uh, what could have prevented the loss? But I love when when you have where books challenge you to take introspection to uh, to to deal with whatever you just read. Um, what made you lay this book out this way? We wanted to give them just a framework, right? We want, we figured, let's keep it real simple, right? Uh, we want to give you just these eight foundational ideas that you can build on, right? Uh, yeah. Trust your relationship with God, because if their relationship with God is not connected, nothing else works, right? Your relationship with connecting with others, and then it's communication, acceptance, right? Really Accepting the person, valuing mm-hmm. the person. That's foundation. I can't talk to you right. Yeah. I can't resolve conflict with you right. Mm-hmm. I can't celebrate you if I don't affirm and accept who God has made you to be. If you're quiet, yeah. that's great. If you're extrovert, that's great. However, your whatever your whatever your unique talent and unique unique expression of how God has made you, I celebrate both the good and both the errors you got to work on, right? <laughs> but all of that, I think all of it builds on each other. And in the last chapter, as I mentioned before, is on resilience, right? Because when you get through all that, at the end of the day, you got to know that we're going to have some, some rocky patches along the way. But if we go through them together, we can make it through it. So we want to just give them a framework they can build on because all yeah. of us need relations. Nobody has the perfect relationship. Facts. I mean, we've been mm-hmm. together 20, almost 25 24, 20, almost 25 years, and we are still a work in progress, right? Mm-hmm. Trying to, she go through different seasons of life. I'm oh, going through different minute, seasons now. of life, she right? Season. <laughs> we almost will be empty nests in a minute. Oh, our, yeah. our baby is a freshman in mm-hmm. high school, and we have a senior in high school and a junior in college. So we're trying to figure out how do we navigate. So yeah. we're, every season is different. Yeah. So it requires just y'all working on the relationship in each season. It's interesting that you just you, you spoke about uh, celebrating differences because that's the next part I was going to read as we get ready to close. But celebrate differences. The church in Corinth was a hot mess. After Paul <laughs> left there, the new believers started arguing and jockeying for power. They competed, condemned, and acted like spoiled brats. Paul's first letter to them was like a parent talking to a three-year-old who needs a timeout. One of Paul's main messages to them was that God values the blend of unity and diversity. They needed to see that their faith in Jesus had brought them into God's family and they were on a level playing field. He explained that they were all on the same team. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. 
There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. First Corinthians 12, four through six. Did you notice the repetition? No matter our backgrounds or income or, or politics, all believers have the same spirit, the same Lord and the same God. And then you talk about how Paul catalogs some of the spiritual gifts. As we look at this and we relate it to relationships, and you touched on it a minute ago, has been able to recognize each other's differences, to be able to appreciate and celebrate the differences, especially when you're looking at God divinely orchestrating a team. Yeah. Everybody can't be a quarterback. Everybody can't be a, a running right. back. Right. God says, hey, I need you to be this, Brian, in your marriage, and I need Stephanie, I need you to be this. And y'all two coming together, celebrating each other's differences is how you both win uh what were some of those differences that you saw in um and i'm gonna i'm gonna start with you brian what are some of those differences that you saw in stephanie that mm -hmm. as you matured you looked at it and it's like this is helping me win this is, this, <laughs> this is a great situation what is that what, what are some of those differences so she's an extrovert and i'm an introvert so that's a difference no one would ever believe that no man, we just you're a whole pastor. You're an introvert. Listen, I'm a whole pastor. I'm a quiet guy. Give me a book and TV <laughs> or something. I'm good. <laughs> she is the life of the party, man, and and so it it makes a great blend yeah. together, right? Um, both her parents went to college, went off to Prairie View, so she grew up in this kind of professional. My father was a mechanic. My mom uh, later became a nursing career. So it's just a different dynamic, right? Um, she was military. So she lived all, she lived in five States, oh, two wow. countries. My mom, two lives countries. In, my mom lives in the house I was born in right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. so, this is, so we got all these. <laughs> See, you can only imagine. <laughs> I was a PK. My dad was a pastor. Hers was not. I mean, so all of these kind of differences, right? Um, really shaped. And so what it did was it gave us this great blend, right? Mm -hmm. That we really do fit. We have a, we have our commonalities, right? We love the Lord. Uh, we like to have fun. We, we value excellence. Um, we um, both educators, both educators. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of commonality there, which, right? which also what y'all do that people need to be, um, well, brought to their attention is y'all donate. Is it like every year that y'all find the, the the school districts in the southern sector and y'all make a nice donation to the Soto ISD, Duncanville ISD, Cedar Hill ISD? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We love to give. I've been watching. I've been watching y'all. I've been watching y'all because it's we stuff are. like that that I look to find out how real the church is. Yeah. I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. I always say. I always. I always. I'm gonna tell y'all. I love supporting ministries where they're giving back more than they're receiving. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Concord represents is a church that's always giving back. And I always hear y'all doing something else or doing something else for the community and doing something else. And I'd be like, that's what, that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be leaders in those initiatives. Uh -huh. And y'all are always on the front lines, whether it's uh, UNCF, y'all doing stuff with them, uh, did a video with, with, with you about uh -huh. that. Y'all always doing something for the community. So again, mm -hmm. I just want to thank y'all for doing thank that. You so so I just want to jump in on that. that. But what are some of the other commonalities and differences? What do you think, Jay? Um, Brian is very patient. Like Brian's very patient. He's gonna think out. He's gonna think it That's out. True. He is gonna plan it out. He's Them like said, our. She ain't, huh? He is <laughs> like he is our planner. Like yeah, he is the master yeah. of the calendar. <laughs> he's gonna send out calendar invites. He, yes, he is. I the, keep the schedule. I'm like the administrator. He's the, he's the administrator. administrator. The family. We have, <laughs> we have meetings. Like we, our, have meetings. Yes, we have meetings. We have like family meetings. <laughs> we plan, I'm planning a vacation for next year. Yeah, I'm already thinking when graduation happens. <laughs> yeah, That's my I'm the organizer of the Is family. that fun for you? You know what it does? He uh, loves it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he tries to downplay, no, he loves it. Like my oh, other man. married oh. friends, they'd be like, "How?" I was like, do hey, 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 I don't know. He loves it. I schedule the babysitters. <laughs> That's my job. Mm -hmm. You know what it does though for a man <laughs> that has a busy calendar, right? It helps me stay involved. Yeah, I think it's it's helped me to stay connected to my family. Right. Otherwise, I'd have to ask her, when is this? When is that? When is that? It has helped me stay connected because I got all the schedules. I got all the schedules. I got all the school mm -hmm. holidays. I got all the conferences. I got all that. It's I'm the one putting it all on and delegating. And so it, it helps me to stay connected to my kids. That's good, Pastor so Carter. I can be a part of the sturdy. That's so, good. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. But she's some. the spontaneous one. She's the fun one. She's go. She gonna say, "Let's do this." So I can do that. I mean, she she keeps it spontaneous. <laughs> Keep it oh spicy. My goodness. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> and then the other thing that's great about him is um, because he's a planner, 
he is like a planner with everything as far as our money, as far as just our kids, spiritual, physical, mental, those he is all in financial goals. That's, That's him. Good. He is, and he'll, and which is really, really helpful. I know some people are like, oh, that would get on my nerves. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It kind of <laughs> helps because when you're thinking about, you know what, let's go on, let's do this. He'd be like, no, remember, you want to do something to the yard. <laughs> and he'll be like, no, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good. That's so, good. So we have this little family deal, a little marriage deal we do every August. We set goals for our marriage and family. So we we take about seven categories for our marriage, for parenting, financial stuff for the house, uh, kids, and like five six, spiritual, and then we try to map out those goals together, and then we spend the next twelve months trying to see mm-hmm. if we can accomplish it. But it helps us get on the same page, so she doesn't go off or I doesn't go off and say, "Hey, you know, I'm doing this." We're like, "Well, okay, well, that oh, means you are. <laughs> what, oh, okay. what we said is not going to happen." But it helps us, and so that's been yeah. something we started years ago, and, it's and really it helps, helps with us. that communication too. It does. Because the main thing that most people find, I don't care how much money you make, whether you make a dollar or you make a million, right? If you're not communicating, yep, right, it, it just, you can get so off track. Yeah. You know how um, this podcast has always been my personal journey as I discover, uncover, and recover love. And it's certain concepts I've had in my mind that I want to implement when I get married. And you guys just touched on one of the most important ones that I want. I said that it's interesting in corporate America, you do uh, 90 day reviews or, Mm -hmm. you know, quarterly reviews or even Mm -hmm. annual reviews. Mm -hmm. But in marriage, we don't do that at all. We don't set goals for our marriage. We don't mm-hmm. we don't check in and say, all right, uh, can you rate me as a communicator? Are you rating mm-hmm. me as a husband? Am I showing up sure. in your in the way mm-hmm. you 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 need me to show up? Am I seeing you? Am I so self-centered in my own ambitions that I've just I forgot that you told me when we first met that you wanted to take up crocheting and I never <laughs> even mentioned that a day in my life. I just said, Oh, you just said that. So yeah. those moments that you're talking about to have an actual to to set to have goal setting in your marriage, uh, accomplishing certain household chores yeah. or whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Hey, we want to remodel the house. That's listed there to mm-hmm. make sure that we put our kids in the midst of all that mm-hmm. because yeah. it's not just y'all serving each other, but these kids are looking at y'all and you're modeling what a healthy marriage looks like mm-hmm. so that when they get married one day, they go, you know what? My, my parents should do X, Y, Z. You know what? Let's let, let's try that. And now we're changing the, our, our, the we're changing the generation. We're, we're, we're reshaping society and our our community mm-hmm. and uh i just I, I i salute y'all because that mm-hmm. is so powerful to yeah. actually be that mm-hmm. intentional about how y'all do y'all marriage yeah mm-hmm, man, we you know it. oh we really appreciate it i think it's i you know i'm thankful for that because like when you said that i thought back to us in the beginning of our marriage fighting <laughs> over the card not going through <laughs> and to the point where we're now um planning things out That's and beautiful. really working together. Yeah. It's actually beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Carter, how can I get this wonderful book made to last? Man, they can go to BrianCarter.org. BrianCarter.org can go right on there and order one for you, your family, your friends. And uh, that's the easiest and the best way to get connected with us. So what's the best? So um, I like to ask authors this. Someone reading your book, what is the biggest payoff, the biggest testimony that they could give you after reading your book? The biggest payoff would be to say how my book helped bless your relationship. If you felt like this book helped you turn the corner, yeah. listen, I, I would love to hear about that. You can connect with me on social and other spaces, but man, that's that that mm-hmm. would that's why we wrote it. That's why I wrote, I wrote it because I wanted to help couples go to the next level, right? Wherever you are, with your friendship, with you as a dad or a mom, with you as a, in, a, in your bl- in your blended family, whatever the context, I want you to take that next step. And I think if you just mm-hmm. you pick, you don't have to take all eight. If you just take yeah. one of them You're and just focus on life. that, listen, it'll change mm-hmm. your relationship. <sighs> <laughs> I love it. Listen, we haven't finalized details uh, of the Dear Future Wifey podcast coming to Concord. Are we coming to Concord? What, what are we doing? We coming. We coming, man. We got to pick the date. It'll be okay. August or September, but I, I can't wait, man. It's going to be exceptional. Uh, I'm excited about you going on tour. Oh, uh, yeah. I've been watching oh, you. Good. I saw yeah. you in Atlanta. I've seen you in, in Arlington. I yeah, said man, to myself, Toronto. listen, when, when you coming to Dallas? So, I, said, uh, Pastor, I said, you know I love Concord. I love y'all. I love y'all whole, the whole aesthetics of y'all sanctuary. Hey, 
have a beautiful sanctuary. Oh, uh, you, and I love how the upgrade has taken place from, you know, I I, I remember Concord way back when uh, E.K. Bailey. Now y'all use that part for what, the youth ministry? We do. Yeah. We do. We Isn't do. that crazy how you look at the church, you be like, this is for the youth right here. Right. And you're able to gift the youth what the, the adults had back in the day. And then you see this beautiful uh, yeah. campus that y'all created. Uh, and that's and that's what's so beautiful when you when you talk about ministry yeah. is to have that vision to be able to say, hey, this is what we're creating. And so um, y'all y'all are like a couple that's dreaming together and building together. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, that's why I say we got to do a better job at honoring our leaders. Oh, and man, so I good. just. Um, um, I just beg people to say, hey, listen, your leaders, it's a sacrifice. I know you have a tendency to look and try to judge what they're doing. Like y'all talking about, well, they should be doing this and they should be. <laughs> be. I wish they could be like, be a pastor for a day and see what that, <laughs> see what that experience is. Because you'll probably cuss out everybody and mess up your whole ministry. You know, like, no, you ain't going to tell me. You got me. Beep, 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 beep. See, see, that's why God didn't call you to do that. You done cussed out everybody. You know, I just seen this one funny video online with this lady got up there. She had cussed out. She had cussed out somebody. It was a first lady, and she was talking about how oh, yeah. some lady gave, tried to yeah. prophesy yeah. over her husband about such such. Said, when I see you, I'm beating your blank blank on sight. <laughs> on sight. I said, wow. this. <laughs> I saw that. It's not going down at the Concord Church like that. <laughs> on, on sight. sight. Right. On, on sight. sight. <laughs> <laughs> beating your blank and blank on sight. I said, wow. Oh, see, I'm going to say it could go with either way. <laughs> That's why you gotta, you gotta watch how you've been called. Uh, but listen, thank y'all so much. Thank Can't you, wait till we uh, we bring the Dear Future Wifey podcast it's to gonna Concord. We're gonna get uh, members from your church. We're gonna open it up where they can submit themselves to actually be on the podcast. We'll yeah. vet them, and um, we'll have different um, panels each service, and we're gonna we're gonna keep it lit. It's gonna be amazing. That's I cannot amazing. wait. I love the fact that you <laughs> open stuff like that. You like you like. Listen. You ain't scared. You we got to be creative, man. We got to be creative. <laughs> we got to be gotta creative. creative to connect with people and reach people. We got to be creative. So, but thank I like you that f- you're gonna vet them. Yeah, yeah we got to vet them. You know, you can't be faking. <laughs> That's you can't right. be faking. Because <laughs> well, some of them be like. Maybe I'm talking about what well, God is good and the oh, Lord. Oh, no, and, sit you, know, down. you know, as I've been praying in my single life, you know, the Lord has been, uh, 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 you know, girl. he's been steadfast. And, you know, in Romans 3, you like, you're just going to just scripture us to death. You just, you just don't exist in the real world. Like, that's what girl, you want. Like, you got to go to the club or something. You got to know Jesus. You got to be able to have some balance. Um, I'm going to ask you this as a, uh, when you were single. How important, before we can close, how important is balance? Balance as Christians, because like I said, we can be so heavily, what they say, so heavily minded minded that we're no earthly good. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. um, y'all speak on that as we (laughs) conclude on that. You know, we were college students. So, you know, college students, we were living (laughs) our best lives. (laughs) And, you know, I wouldn't change that experience for anything. But I think the one thing that um, my family did a really good job in and and I use the same thing with my girls now. Um, is you just have to know your worth. You have to know your worth in Christ. Yeah. So I felt like knowing who I am in Christ helped me define some boundaries of what I was, how I was going to live my best life in college Yeah. and stuff. Because I, I, I think one thing that, um, I, look, one thing that gets on my nerves is like people who, Oh, wait, I don't know how to say this. You better keep it general. I know, I gotta keep it general. Okay, one thing that, like, will bother me (laughs) of people who have, like, teenagers and so on. Like, I remember you. You you were li- you were freak nicking it. You were, yeah, you were, yeah. And now you are so paranoid about what your own child or what you're going to expose your own child to. And, um... You, you just have to be careful with that. I feel like, I feel like you have to teach your child their worth. Their worth is found in Christ. Their worth is not going to be found in social media. Their worth is not going to be found on how good you can twerk or whatever, yeah. or you know how great your body is. But your worth is found in Christ. I feel like once you've established that, and that's something that we've talked with our girls about, and like now even with our son is. Who are you in Christ? There it is. Right. Who are you in Christ? Because once they know who they are in Christ, whatever they face, it's like they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, right, even with singles, you got to have fun, right? I, yeah. I, 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 think, have fun. I, I think that we got to, 
I mean, I think our relationship with Christ is the foundation of our lives. You're right. But Christ was, he was, he was, he was with the sinners. He was in different places. Yeah. He, been, he had relationships with everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody got to have your own boundaries, right? Yeah. yeah. But you, I think you need to, if you're looking for somebody, right? You can't just say, I'm going to go to church every Sunday. Yeah, please and stop I know doing he that. Show you're up not going to find at it. The church, right? <laughs> Start there. It's a good yeah. foundation. Yeah, but good go family. out and have fun. Meet, yeah. meet people. Go to the happy hour. Just yeah. have a good time. I think we meet a lot of people and they're like, man, I, I can't find them. I'm like, listen, or I can't find her i'm like man you got to you got to enjoy the city it's an incredible place go on the trips have a great time uh and just enjoy the season of life god has you in and you never know how god connects the docks along the way so i think there is balance you don't want to go too far right yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. but uh yeah. but yeah. but you need to but in, enjoy life man i think that's an important part of how we live out our faith people want to see you enjoy life have fun laugh a lot have great friendships and enjoy the life God Travel. has given you. Yeah, man. Listen, there's so many advantages to being single. Like, yeah. my friends who are single, I love them. They'll be like, yeah, I'm about... I'm, they just be out. They like, be like, out. They, they didn't ask nobody. They didn't they have, have to, to get no permission. I, I, if like, I go to Target, like, I'm like, yeah. I'm at Target. I was like, wait a <laughs> I'm at Target, you're in Jamaica. There's a freedom yeah. that's there that you yeah. ought to enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. Enjoy that. Man, that's awesome. And it's funny you say that because uh, Thursday I'll be headed out to Jamaica with about 120 yeah, supporters see, of the podcast. That is and so We're going to do a amazing. live podcast recording in Jamaica wow. on this coming up Saturday. And so it's I been it's been it's been great. And so that's what I said I'm gonna do in these, this single season, um, is just go take trips. Yeah. And so it's been great. A partner with a travel agency that we getting flewed out. Wow. So we're going right. we're gonna enjoy it. Um but listen, man, um, hey, make sure that y'all go and purchase this book. What happens now, Carters, is that when 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 someone comes on and they promoting a the book on the podcast, the followers go out and they just go buy it like crazy. So you got to make wow. sure you got inventory because these they're they going to buy it. <laughs> All right. They're going to they buy it. They're going to blow your mind. BrianCarter.org. We'll be Brian waiting Carter. on you. We'll be waiting on you. BrianCarter.org. Um, and how can people connect with you? Because they're going to be all in your DMs. Like, these women are going to be like, can you mentor me? Can you? Can you? they they just going to love you. So, Stephanie, uh, how, how can they connect with you? Okay, so you can connect with me on Instagram at Miss Steph Carter. Miss yeah. Steph Carter. Miss Steph Carter. And then Mr. Brian L. Card on Instagram. We're both on Instagram together. Good. It'll be in the description. I'll put yeah. both of their handles in the description. Also, the link to the book. Uh, hey, y'all give it up. What? But Terrence, I just need to tell you how proud we are of you, yeah. man. You are Dallas's own, man. <laughs> Watching your journey, man, uh, from the time of this inception, the God has just given you a vision mm -hmm. and God has given you a heart. Uh, to help people. And so, man, we want to let you know how proud Dallas is. You, Dallas own, man. And yeah. God is using you in tremendous ways across the country. So mm -hmm. thank you for this privilege to be with you. Yeah. But thank you for the work and the mission and the vision and the impact you're having across the world, man. We're we cheering for you. No, we don't don't try to get me emotional. No, no, y'all trying, trying to mess with me. I'm going to keep it. From a pastor standpoint, what do you see when you see this? Because this is, this is, do you feel like this is unconventional ministry? You think there's what, what what type of ministry is this? I wouldn't call it unconventional. I just call it ministry, right? I, we encourage people to find whatever space God has you in, mm -hmm. whatever influence or platform He's given you to use that to leverage to impact people for Him. So this is not unconventional. This is just ministry. This is just the avenue. You've had a background in the arts. You've always yeah. had all these mm -hmm. gifts and talents. Who knew the Lord would order all those, yeah. connect all those in this space? But the impact you're having is showing the need. Right. It's showing mm -hmm. the desire for people to have a space and God is using you to do it, man. So like you said, you, when God has a favor, when there's favor yeah. on your life, yeah, you just do what you yeah. got to do. Right. <laughs> you show up and the Lord gets behind that and blesses. He that. goes so and just multiplies. This is, this is ministry, man. So keep doing it. How um, how is y'all singles ministry? So our singles ministry is kind of spread out through the life of the church. It's 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 kind of engaged in our men and women's ministry okay. as opposed to being a separate own. When we've done singles ministries, either you love singles ministry or you hate it. Or yeah. you hate it. And yeah. so we've kind of been looking and listening trying to figure out how what that ought to look like in our church. Or it becomes a women's ministry. Exactly. And so it's 90% women and 10% guys. Yeah. So we've taken a break trying to figure out what is it what should it look like? 
and an expression of our church. So when you come, you're going to be a great kind of kickoff for us to try to figure out what that what that look like in our life for our church. It's interesting. It's the first time our listeners are going to hear this is that I'm launching this app called Singles Ministry Worldwide, where God gave me a vision when I was 19 years old that I was going to revolutionize a singles ministry. Get out. And so I'm about to build the world's largest singles ministry. But one of the things that I did want to... Um, to fix or help circumvent is so many women that yeah. 90 to 10, yeah. that 90 yeah. to 10 yeah. is mm-hmm. like, I need to go. I'm going to be very, I'm going to do a whole campaign called Adam, where are you? Yeah. And I'm going to mm. go find these men. I'm going to go find these men. Cause I, it just, it just didn't make sense to me. If, if you want a woman and all of them are right here, but then you don't want to go into a singles ministry to go find them. So then I got to say, what does, <laughs> what, what, what do you think in the singles ministry is that you won't go there? It's like all these women here and you won't go. Um, and so I got to find out what that is because <laughs> that's crazy. Ain't it? So, so my thing is, uh, one of the things that, that we're going to specialize in is, uh, being extremely active. Like you're talking about mm-hmm. doing trips together, going mission trips, being involved in causes and, uh, um, nonprofit events that's taking place in cities. And we're going to take the small group model because we're going to be worldwide, but then we'll have group leaders in certain states and cities where now you can be engaged on a small group standpoint. That's great. And so That's guys great. has been downloading this stuff to me. It's mm-hmm. the, one of the biggest things I've ever done. Uh, the app is almost complete. And I'm like, all right, God, here we go. This is what we're going to do. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. It. Yeah. 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 oh, this That's is, this, this is crazy. This is crazy. So I I was, it was going to launch uh, last week. And I said, no, I want to put more of the infrastructure together because okay. yeah. I'll just throw something out there and figure it out as I go along. <laughs> so, yeah. Jump out the jump out the plane and be like, oh, let me try to fly now. So I want to put some processes. Like I need that Brian Carter mentality where he can put stuff together and align it like that, that administrative mindset. But listen, I thank y'all so much. Thank, thank you. you for speaking into my life. Thank you for uh, confirming and affirming what uh, God has been doing in my life with this thing because – as y'all know, it's, it's real scary. I didn't sure. know what it was when sure. I created it. I was sure. like, I'm going to be transparent. I'm sure. going to tell all my business in front sure. of the world. Sure. And, mm-hmm. and hopefully people can learn something from it. But here I am. Mm-hmm. And um, we just hit 343,000 subscribers this morning. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Getting over 2.5 million views a month on my wow. YouTube channel. Uh, the, the audio platform is ranked number seven on Apple Podcasts, United States, number mm-hmm. one in about 20 countries wow. and so just to even know what God is doing yes, and sir. having this message Amazing. speak to people all across incredible. the world is just humbling um, but I thank y'all for sharing I thank, thank y'all you. for being transparent y'all were so relatable y'all were so <laughs> honest I saw a side of y'all I never saw before <laughs> I was like, I like them. These are my people. These are my people. People. Before I conclude, how did we? How did we know some of the same? My, my family members know you because I was at a family reunion in in um, Hearn, Texas. Oh, Lord. oh yes. Oh, and, and, we related. Yeah. You know, if you from Hearn. Yeah, because you was there. Because I'm in Goss. Goss. Yeah. That's a hometown. Though. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I was I, I was at That's this we was at this crazy. little small church and then you walked in and we and we had communicating. They was like, yeah, we grew up. With her and I was like, okay, who is this? Like, oh my god, like one of my aunts or whatever. Like, y'all just y'all was just talking to each wow. other, y'all been knowing each other forever. It's a small world. Yeah, I'm her and I was like, y'all wow, this is crazy. Listen, you spent your, your summer in the country. Picking pecans. Yeah. Blueberries. Yeah. And then you make yeah. a blueberry pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy, though. But I was like, hey, how in the world? They was like, yeah, we grew up with her. I was like, well, I got to go unpack that. That's, that's, that's interesting. But listen, y'all give it up for the Carters, y'all. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. 
Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Lataris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, listen, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. I love it. I just love talking to real people. And I really love when I'm able to talk to pastors who are really transparent and relevant because I believe that's how we bring people to the kingdom is when they see the real side of what Christianity looks like. Not this fake thing, not this act of profession or this act of perfection, but this act of, you know, being real and relatable. And that's how we bring people to the kingdom. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, I had a speaking engagement last week in Houston at a women's conference. That Sunday, I attended Pastor Keon and Shiny Henderson's church. I'm always fascinated by unlikely couples who come together for marriage. I never pass judgment on if the parties are right for each other because that's none of my business. I have no dog in that fight. I celebrate couples who defeat the odds and actually make it to their nuptials. Observing Keon and Shani pass by me during service confirms something in my spirit. They are indeed each other's purpose partners. 